<laughs> all right, so uh, where we left off, you guys had all arrived at the cave um, along the road up to Seer Top. Uh, the tracks that led up to the cave, there's a big V shape, basically tracks leading in and then a different, you know, a set leading out of this cave. Um, and then inside the cave, of course, were the remains of a campfire that was still warm. So clearly had been used earlier in the day. Uh, it is quite late. It is 11 p.m. thereabouts on uh, Star's Day. So, you know, Saturday night, 11 p.m. is so almost Sunday. Um, exhaustion levels, just for a reminder. In fact, let me grab that from last week's notes here. Uh, no, current exhaustion tired. levels. Yeah, uh, Norok, Artemy, Pogo, Dazim all at one, uh, Sarah at two, Shok at two, and Avar at zero. All right. So if you guys still have those, just uh, and we haven't decided yeah. how we're going to sleep for the evening. We're, we're just yeah, you guys were over. still we're mulling our options. Yeah, you were basically still right at the at the mouth of the cave, um, kind of deciding what to you know what you wanted to do basically to to handle that. But remember, we don't have to stay in this cave if we make that nice little, you know, tree fort that she could make. We can always find a, maybe maybe find some trees. We could grow some trees around it or create some sort of camouflage and stay away, stay out of this cave. You do know there's a blizzard coming too, though, Artemy, remember? Yeah, I... I we could still be all right in a blizzard. We'd want to be out though. there just with the thing with the blizzard. We would, but no... Okay, so the, the reason okay? that I pointed that out is, is I'll go ahead and tell you that the Artemy would, would be, you know, aware of the idea that although the dome itself is is uh, uh, solid enough that snow will just land on it, if there's eight feet of snow on top of the dome and then she has to end the spell because the time runs out or, you know, that the, you guys choose to leave, that's going to come down. We're all going to be buried alive in snow. So you still have the exactly you still have that potential threat. That's not necessarily an issue, but Artemy does realize, of course, that that the uh, heavy snowfall is coming very rapidly. And I'll shut up now. Go ahead. And is the cave big enough to put the tree inside the cave? Yes, just, just to tell. Yeah, just in the center of the cave. I mean, it's at least if we do that, we're inside, away from the snow, and nothing can get to us. And we mm -hmm. can get a heads up. I mean, I can have Pietro fly around like or at least perch somewhere near the beginning of the cave and wake me up telepathically if some if giants start coming back. But here's the thing. If the giants come back, I'm not sure. What, like, is there a plan? Are we just going to murder giants in a cave no, if they try to hurt us? No, we leave talk to the giant, and we leave it at that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, though. They like. I don't think they like us, people like me and you. You know, they, they'll, I, they'll tolerate him. Can I look? Is it just one set of footprints, or does it look like multiple that had... Like walked behind each other in a line. Do um, any of them look like they wore toe jewelry? <laughs> uh, give me. I'll let you choose either survival or investigation. Uh, where's my survival? Hang on, I gotta move my thing down. Why can I not see survival? Thanks for making it home on time, G. I don't know. I don't know if that was you know took a rush for you or not, but I was afraid it was gonna end up being six again. He's all out of breath. <laughs> no, it, it's usually fine. Well, five five forty five at least. It's usually fine. Uh, okay. Again, last, last week I had to stay because, well, I didn't have to stay, but I chose to because some moron tracked a bunch of mud around the gym. So, I voluntarily chose to vacuum it up before I left, even though I was off the clock. So. Okay. Awesome. I mean, as long as as long as five forty five is going to be realistic, you know, the majority of the time, then five forty five to eight thirty, you know, our, our kind of normal end time, that'll be fine. That's only cutting off fifteen minutes. If it's yeah. going to be regularly, though, or if it happened consistently where it's 6 to 8.30, that's only two and a half, and that kind of, that starts to, to hamper the experience a little bit, and we may need to adjust some if, if it comes to that, but as long as it's a regular, it's going to be 5.45, 15 minutes isn't going to hurt anything, especially because we usually BS that much anyways. Yeah, so. and, like, I was actually uh, home, like, I don't know, five or ten minutes before we logged on anyway. But I saw I, you logging in, but I assumed, it, I assumed it was Becky. Well, so. it was. It was. But I, was, okay. it was like, I was even a few minutes earlier, but again, I know you guys were probably just on talking anyway. So. Yeah, I mean, we we still all gathered about 545, so everybody was actually, including you, were even on time. So at 545, that all works. Cool. All right. Uh, well, as far as Sarah's investigation, it's all of the individual steps look about the same weight. Uh, and you're not, you know... A, a detective or anything, but it does look like it was probably just one individual. Okay, well, at least that means we don't have to deal with a bunch of frost giants. I mean, it's just one. I don't want. I just don't want to murder a giant. It's not like they're. I think I'm just oh. worried that they're gonna get mad because we're I'm staying not. in their winter shack. 
What if he brings a giant lady here and wants to get busy, and then we have to just... But then it's the middle of a storm. We can't, I don't know what else. We're, but, I mean, well, then, can we at least agree if if we get upset, should we just leave? Like, what do we? Yeah. What's our plan if they get upset that we're here? I don't think it's their cave because multiple people use this, and if um, the villagers use it like a, for hunting, then it's definitely not the giant's cave. It's not theirs, but I mean, I, are you going to have that argument? I don't. I don't really Avar. want to be the one to have that argument. Avar, so not to interrupt, but but she's right. I mean, when we, when I came up there with them, they wouldn't let me hold watch, but we, they they you know one one of them stood outside the whole time and, and they kept watch all night, and then they, they they kept waking me up on accident when they would come back in because it was cold. Wait, not giants. You're talking about the people you were hunting with, right? I've never seen a giant. Okay. And we don't, don't forget we've got the boy to look after. And I'm not saying we have to kill the giant. I'm just saying if he decides to start a fight, at least it's only one and not a bunch. As a last cool. option. <laughs> All right. We'll tell you what. If we do end up trying to speak with him and trying to get a mutual agreement and it goes south and he does something like crushes me with a giant rock, let's try to, when we, if we fight him back, let's just, let's try to, you know, we can, we can tie him up or restrain him somehow or at least try to make it so that he knows that we don't want to murder him. I don't want to just be killing giants for all we know. Maybe they hate the dragon too and d don't want probably anything to do with it. That's probably why he's down here, I would assume. I imagine they, a dragon would eat the shit out of a giant if I had the chance. Nice big snack. <laughs> I'm scared, guys. All right. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll go with the rest of the group. We can, we can go in the tree. I just... I don't know if I'm going to be able to be my usual, you know, extra terrifying self to a giant that big when I'm talking to. I don't know if I'll be able to scare it off like I do all the other people that we encounter. You know, my, you masculine <laughs> my masculinity, you know, it might not work. Ben, did you see that message? <sighs> yep. Okay. So what's the plan? Make the treehouse in the cave. Okay. All right, all right, you make the treehouse. I'll keep Pedro watching guard. We only have to run faster than the boy. What was that, Sako? We only have to run faster than the boy. <laughs> well, that's messed up. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty sure if we're running away, you just got to run faster than me. I'm pretty yeah. confident. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty, pretty sure that's faster than You see that 10-year-old <laughs> running earlier? He's got legs like a sprinter. <laughs> out of control. Avar grins. Yeah, I'm you're pretty fast. fast. You're fast for your age. I'm slow for my size. What? What can I do to help? So old because of my beard, you can tell. <laughs> he says, well, uh, do, "Do we need like firewood or anything? What can What can I do to help?" Uh, we won't need firewood because I'm going to make the treehouse warm enough. And if we make um, firewood, the giant is going to know someone's here ahead of time, and I don't know if. Uh, I don't know if it's better or worse for that to be a case. Does the boy know how to make small traps, noise traps? We do we do we have anything that would I can try to string things together to make noise, but I don't do we have like noise things? I wonder if or if there's some way we could make like a I have some pythons and I have to have string if I do my uh because string is one of my things for my alarm spell. That's so. not consumed when you cast it though, so Yeah, so I Oh you mean you mean you you do have some because of that, gotcha. Yeah, so I could give him that and the Pythons I I mean they're not gonna make a ton of noise, but it's something if he wants to do it. I but then we'd try. have to disassemble it when leaving. True. I just I just want to carry my own weight so that so that you guys know that I'm I'm helpful. How about you and me go forage and Sarah puts an alarm spell? Okay. All right. I know the plants and stuff around here, so I can I can help with finding what would be edible and what isn't and stuff. Perfect. So we'll go see if we can find some berries and stuff for breakfast, and then when I get back, I'll make the treehouse. I was going to say, okay, because if you did that first, you can't leave it, so you do that when you get back. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, it is. It is very well, late, case, guys. We um, need to make. We need to make a fire while they're doing that. I, I, I don't want to stay in this cold ass cave while they're out looking for berries. That's 
that's fine. I'll fire bolt the fire that's already kind of the embers that are over there. Okay. Is, that, is that enough wood in <laughs> that to get, get that going? Yeah, there's still a little ah. bit of glow from the embers there anyway, so you ah. guys can, can kind of just reignite what's already there, at least temporarily. Um, the it is it is late, so it will be very dark, Fox. Um, you. I'm gonna use my light cantrip. Okay, all right. Uh, it does make you you know a little more visible, of course, too, because you'll be kind of reflecting off of the white snow, which means anything flying above, and it is nighttime. Remember. Yeah, but I cast on a little bead on my belt, so it does like I, I could obscure it a bit. Just so flashlight. Okay. Yeah, like a okay. tiny light. All right. Uh, I'll, I'll say that you. I mean, you've done that before as well. I just wanted to to confirm that you weren't you know just mm -hmm. kind of. Setting a wide globe of it's of not light. like I'm using daylight here, okay? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it just I'm, I'm pointing that out because it is you know 11 o'clock at night already. So if you're, yeah. you're going to be foraging, it will be difficult. Um, all right, uh, go ahead and give me a survival check. Uh, you can do either survival or nature and do it with advantage because Avar is helping uh, and he is proficient in those. Um, Norok, Pogo, Sarah, and Nazim, what are you guys doing back in the cave? Just just set the um, fire and keep warm. Does anyone have any food? I think I have. I had to give. Left. All right, I had to them. give all of mine to uh, Artime because I am very small. All right, I'm gonna let them dig through my backpack for whatever they need to use, and I'm ritual casting alarm. Okay. So it'll take me ten minutes. Okay. Um, I'm surprised none of us have a way of, you know, out of curiosity. Are there any? Uh, do I see any massive boulders big enough to block the entrance to the cave? <laughs> And would they be considered huge items that I could put to life using my anime, <laughs> anime. object spell to block it, to block uh, the front of the cave? There are, out in front of the cave, like, if you basically, if you're standing at the mouth of the cave, you're looking down at, like, a 45-degree angle, like a pretty steep slope that goes down to the road. Um, and there oh. are there are a few trees. They're, they're kind of pretty spaced out pretty far. The road is probably 80 feet away or something. It's a good distance. Um, and there's two little kind of outcroppings where, you know, if you were to slide down, you would kind of hit the outcropping and then stop because they kind of jut out of the of the slope a little bit, and they're a little bit more flat, uh, you know, horizontal. Um so, anyways, there's the both of those, but neither of them look like they're, you know, separate uh, chunks of stone. Like they're not like separate boulders. Yeah, they're kind of, exactly, they're kind of stone that's jutting out a little bit, yeah. And everything else would be covered in snow and be too hard to find. And to yeah, snow. I mean, if, yeah. if you were to if you were to go stumbling in the dark to try to find one, you, you could probably, but it might be, you know, risky. Ugh. I remember. There's like three spells that I could have gotten that could have helped with this, and then I don't have any of them. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, Sarah, how far out from the mouth of the cave are you going, and what's the what's the I guess radius of this look like of the alarm? Let me not use a spell and cast this so we can actually see what. It does. Uh, let me also point out too. You guys just got the chill from you guys. You know, re re apparated back into physical form um, after flying as, as wind to get here. So you're, you, you already took essentially your chance at the extreme cold, but being out there for 10 minutes is going to be, you know, too much longer than that. 10 minutes is fine, but if you're out there for, you know, another half, another 20 minutes, say half an hour, you're going to have to make another check. Okay. okay. Um, so it's a 20 foot cube. Can I set it? Is there a way to set it so it still, like, is a little bit away from the mouth of the entrance, but still covers the mouth of the entrance? Yeah, no, there's there's a little bit, there's probably 15 feet or so of flat ground that leads into the mouth of the cave uh, with um, with enough of an outcropping on either side that you could cover all of that. But it does mean that for them to trigger it, you know, if anybody was to come up close and trigger it, they would have to get pretty close to the mouth of the cave already. Well, on the bright side, if Pietro misses it, we'll know, uh, you know, we'll have about seven seconds I mean, it's to know what's to happening enough to wake us up is there just one path that comes in or is there multiple ways to come at there's this only no cave? there's only the one entrance into the cave and norok has used this cave you know before plenty of times in his youth so he's familiar with the you know with the area surrounding mm. it's just not normally buried under snow all right so if i set it out like i don't know 30 feet from the mouth of the cave there would definitely be a ways to go left or right to get around it, but okay. it's not visible. So, you're right. I mean, the do do do. Uh, let's see. I mean, you do you set this up th this physical string with a bell on it, but it's not going to be 
very vis it's not going to be clearly visible, especially in the night, for and anything it, trying to walk by. And so it wouldn't necessarily try to go left or right. I could yeah. bury it under the snow because it's not like an audible alarm. I can have it wake me up mentally. I'm going to go ahead and tell you that you know from what Artemis has told you that the blizzard is coming. It's going to get buried whether you like it or not. It's okay. but it, but the spell will still have the same effect. It's not going to be 20 feet of snow, hopefully, <laughs> uh, but because it is a 20 foot cube, so you should, you'd still be fine there. And the odds of something trying to specifically skirt what it doesn't know is there are not very likely. All right. Well. I don't want to take the risk of anything going around it, so I'm going to put it to where it at least nothing can get past it. It has okay. to go through the alarm. Okay. Even if it's only like a one round, you know, sure. something's coming, at least we know. <laughs> All right. Got that. Um, uh, uh, Artemis still being out there for, for, you know, a while there, especially with the furs that you covered yourselves in and Avar having um, resistance to it, uh, you'll, you'll still be fine there. Uh, okay. Sarah, you, you finish yours in enough time. Are you heading back in the cave where it's warm? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Nazim, Norok, Pogo? Uh, I'm going to grab a little bit of the charcoal from the fire and uh, draw a bunch of dicks on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, Norok, the, the ancient and some, you know, nearly sacred drawings of your people are all of a sudden being Wait, defaced. Wait, there's already drawings on the wall? I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to add a couple small dicks to the drawings already on the wall. If there's like people if there's people on the wall, I'm just going to Well, there were already dicks larger on. dicks in their places, so you're just drawing tiny dicks over, over larger tiny dicks. Tiny dicks on the there. larger dicks, yeah. You gotta class it up with some dick butt. Yeah, I'll, there you uh, go. <laughs> I'll use my best judgment onto where I'm going to draw some, some little dicks with the charcoal. All right. <laughs> All right, uh, Nazim, what are you doing? I'm just going to find a quiet place, uh, sit down, drink from my water uh, skin, and have a ration, uh, but just just intensely think about the words that uh, Santos said and okay. just kind of mull over that, that poem, the chittering songs of the Chulin Singh okay. uh, thing, and uh, do my best to just try and remember anything from my past that uh, might be valid. Give me... A, a flat intelligence check with advantage. Okay. Um, in kind of sitting in contemplation and, and sipping at your water and, and kind of eating your, your plain potatoes and bread or whatever it is it used to, you know, your, your very simple rations of bland foods, uh, you have a, a moment of recollection where um, where Chuli, and you kind of break that down, and the word Chul, C-H-U-U-L, um, is a, a kind of creature that you've heard of before. Um, you, you've, you've uh, you know, read it in books and so on in, in your previous life before this tadpole had kind of absorbed half of your brain. Um, and it's it's a it's a crab like uh, semi humanoid. They they walk on on two back legs and have uh, two very large crab like appendages for their front or forearms. And then there's the uh, the two kind of center arms on either side. So they still have all four or all eight appendages. Uh, Looks anyways, like crab walks like people. Very much uh, like yeah yeah people. crab people. That's exactly what they uh, uh, what they resemble. In fact, actually, the rest of the group you guys had had. Uh, come in mortal contact with uh, numerous of them uh, at the temple at Nereverin. Uh Nazim, you did not, but you have read about these creatures before. They're called Chul. C-H-U-U-L. And you gather that must be what the song is referring to. That, that those people, they're, the chittering songs that they sing is where this is this uh, verse of that song is located. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. How about you, Norak? Uh, I'm going to. What well, is the um, the jug that makes shit? Is that in the bag of holding? Which Artemis has with her, I assume. I was yes. Gonna, yeah, I think yep. I'll have, never mind. I was going to say I was going to have a drink, but I'll just play my loot then. And I'm purposely going to sit uh, at the front of the cave, so that way, if our uh, giant friend does come back, I'm the first person that he sees. So. <laughs> Um, I've got water that I can make taste like wine, but it's not going to get you drunk. <laughs> Fuck it, do it. All right. <laughs> I'll pretend and I'll just get all stupid and start stumbling around. Pretend. 
I'm gonna look at Avar and be like, "You don't want to end up like that man right there, <laughs> not being able to hold your boots." <laughs> he's gone. No, he's, he's, he's oh a yeah, bad, he's uh, not here anymore. He's a bad yeah, role model. <laughs> yeah. oh, that's funny. Um, all right, then Artemy, the the gathering uh, uh, process you guys have gone through, um, Avar is extremely useful because there's apparently this root plant that grows up here that you weren't familiar with uh, previously. Um, you know, it's something that, that just grows up here in the mountains. Uh, it's called Sigvat, and uh, he he spots these these uh, kind of chive-looking, uh, almost grass-like, uh, uh, you know, not appendages, but these things sticking up out of the ground um, in an area beneath a tree where the snow hasn't quite buried them yet. And, and he's all excited and kind of rushes off for them. Uh, he... he Stumbling through the dark, especially since you're flashlighting it. Yep. Uh, he ends up tripping over something, a root or something of that for uh, that sense, and, and kind of face plants. Uh, he's not seriously injured, but gets a small nosebleed uh, where he smacked his face on on the ground as he fell in the snow. Uh, but he does point out these these roots, um, and you end up pulling them out. Uh, they are quite. They're they're kind of uh, carrot shaped, let's say, but much larger, uh, like like a decent sized cucumber. Um, and there's there's a, uh, probably half a dozen or so under the tree, and you pull those out, and that'll be more than enough. Uh, he says they're delicious. It's up to you whether you want to try them or not. Um, but you, you don't even need to cook them. He says you can just cut into it and eat them like they are. Uh, and since they're you know out of the ground like this, they'll be nice and cold already, so they won't go bad or anything. Okay, perfect. And that was how many, sir? Uh, six of them. Okay. But they're a really good size. I mean, they're they're enough, you know, easily to, for one person to eat, you know, half of one in the morning. So you have enough for twelve people. Okay. Um. So we'll just go back and I'll meet the tree house. All right. Uh. Great. Then I have ahead. a question for Pogo. How long is he spending drawing dicks on the wall? <laughs> just until we got the tree house up. Great. Then when I come in, I am ritual casting unseen servant, and if he's still up there drawing dicks, then I'm gonna have it go up and pants him. <laughs> While I am way real across confusing. The <laughs> it's gonna be a very confusing thing that has not happened to Pogo in this game. <laughs> um, I think his name was Jareth, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, I think so. Let me find it. It wasn't Jareth. It was Jer something. But I just searched Jareth, and the only one of that is uh, from from one of Ben's games a while back. That is Jared. Yeah, Jared. J A R E D. Um, is the unseen servant? You trying, trying to sick Jared from Subway on the, my tiny body? <laughs> his, his boy like uh, my uh, tiny frame. boy like frame. <laughs> Jesus. Um, <laughs> he's holding up these pants as he as he walks up. These. Uh, well, give no, me... no, no, I'm not gonna have him hold them. I'm just gonna have him pants him and then step back so it's like nothing. Like no one was over there. Nothing happened. We don't know. How he's a, yeah. Uh. <laughs> He's he's not entirely invisible though, especially for anyone with an arcane uh, eye. Anybody that, that can sense uh, sense that, that a rail has been tapped, uh, which means that potentially, anyways, Pogo could be able to see him. Uh, but give me um, just Sarah. Give me an intelligence check with advantage. Back in the day, I used to have you guys do memory checks when we would use uh, uh, fantasy realms because I could just add it as a skill. Um, I don't think there's a current <laughs> add-on that I can use for that. Uh, there's a very distinct smell, the smell of ozone, um, and, and kind of a, a certain fragrance, not, not perfume, but a certain kind of fragrance similar to perfume, uh, that appears as soon as Jared appears. It kind of begins to fill the cave in this kind of very, uh, compact area, this, this dome area that, that the wind blowing outside is not kind of able to easily dissipate the smell. Um, it's not it's not unpleasant. It's a perfectly fine smell, but it is something uh, that, that rings very distant bells uh, in your memory. As soon Does as Jared appears. Smell... So when we were fighting the Juthrin and they sent me to that weird place where they look like Jared. Uh huh. Was there a smell there? Did it? Does it smell like that? Real, real familiar. Exactly like that. Okay. So that that's the ozone smell, and then there's there's another uh, kind of almost perfumish kind of smell on top of that. It smells very Fabian, in fact, actually. Uh, so if anything, there might be a certain um, nostalgia that it provokes in Nazim as well, because it, the the smell is is very distinctly of Fabian herbs and and uh, uh, you know perfumes and so on. That's where Nazim is from, what originally pre ceremorphosis but uh, with that, though, 
the <laughs> the attempt of the invisible servant to chase uh, Pogo around, trying to pants him. Uh, <laughs> give me a deck save, I think, on Pogo. Let's try it. And Sarah's give me a flat d20 roll. We'll add a simple modifier, probably four or so. I don't have a stat block for your your invisible servant. So. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 wait. Here, well, <laughs> oh, that's, a, that's perfect. A natural 20 versus a natural one. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, Pogo, as you are kind of leaning against these, this precarious section of rocks, trying to you know use it like a ladder, essentially, uh, kind of leaned against the wall as flat as you can with these stones kind of stacked on top of each other, uh, you hear this, this apparition, this kind of vacuum and then replacement of, of the air behind you, immediately recognizing that something arcane has, has uh, occurred right behind you and filled the space. Um, you, your reaction is what? Uh, I'm going to turn around and can I see it somewhat like in the air? Is yeah, the, you, because air? you knew, because you, you could sense this was you know something arcane occurring behind you, the moment you turn around you see the threads shaping into this form uh you had met the the uh I've invisible seen servant. Before, yeah, yeah you've seen him before and recognize that this must be her uh, he's gonna turn around ah oh, is this guy here to start drawing dicks on the wall with me he, he's reaching his hands out towards your midsection <laughs> oh do i is this extra what do i get from this, is this, is mean, this you know you could have just, like, you you choose... just said you enjoy my company you know santa you didn't have to send this guy to do the dirty work <laughs> You just like to watch over in the corner, and I'm gonna like just keep pushing, pushing it away as he's trying to like out there. I mean, is this what you're into, Sarah? Do you guys know Sarah likes to watch? Sarah's just Come not here. even looking. She just got her Come face. Here, everyone, look, look, it's look what she's thing. trying to do to me. <laughs> the the semi translucent. I'm gonna keep pushing it away. <laughs> it tickles. Uh, near near <laughs> featureless. <laughs> The, the near featureless semi translucent face you can just see kind of these eye holes essentially in turns in Sarah's direction with with it clearly must be a scowl although there's nothing on the face suggesting as such it has to be a scowl like it, like that you would call him to do such a thing uh, as he keeps trying to you know get his hands batted away by by Pogo <laughs> Jerry it's okay it's fine don't worry about it sorry about that this, gonna, this is gonna... what you called me for <clears throat> oh it has sorry. a voice yeah <laughs> I didn't know we could talk. <laughs> Uh, he he kind of did before. He he spoke to you before uh, a little bit. I mean, I'm open to new things, Sarah, but sometimes consent no. is important. You just got to come over and whisper <laughs> in my ear. Safe word yeah. is pineapple, and I'll let you, you know. <laughs> no. Ghostly handjob. <laughs> the, the safe, that should not be pineapple. In any oh, situation. that's right. That's right. <laughs> We're already using that one in this game. <laughs> God, that would be bad. No. It was. I was just gonna have him pants you. It oh, was, just a little joke. Oh, yeah. sorry. I didn't. Uh, uh, I didn't mean to ruin it there. But it was. It was a fun little little tickle, anyways. Don't worry, guys. Sarah doesn't to want to watch. Sarah doesn't want to watch this invisible man give me a hand job. Oh. I, I misunderstood the situation. She is probably blushing from head to toe and won't look <laughs> anyone in the eye. <laughs> The the invisible since you told him that he could stop uh, the invisible servant stands kind of you know normal normal height again uh, humanoid in stature and in, in, in shape uh, or human rather in stature and shape may I go is yes. this all you needed sorry he I mean you're dissipate. more than welcome okay yeah, he dissipates <laughs> not not a word well I think I just pissed off my unseen servant so that's fine. <laughs> uh, I forgot that that guy existed I will tell you that that when you when you were trapped for that moment in the um, the Otaterol, uh trap, you know, the, the like a hunter's trap, uh, that is exactly what you were seeing. The things that were flying by were unseen servants that were off to do whatever bidding was was given to them by their uh, controllers. Okay. Uh, I would say that now, having seen you saw Jared before, and then went there and saw those spirits flying around, those those invisible shapes, not spirits. That's not quite the right term, uh, but that, and then seeing seeing Jared again, that's exactly what you had seen there. Um, but with that, uh, Artemis and Avar come in, buddling in through the door, uh, past Norok's legs, uh, who's trying to sit in the in the doorway there. Can't quite stand up exactly, but kind of semi-blocking the doorway, uh, you know, shivering and, and uh, uh, kind of starting to, to warm their, you know, uh, rub their hands together in front of the fire and so on. Everybody's back together. Okay, I'm going to put the chairs. Okay. Um, um, I give us a 10% chance of actually getting a decent night's sleep. 
Well, we'll find out here. <laughs> uh, Artemé, you have to kind of kick some dirt over the fire because they did, you know, start the fire going again. Uh, so you have to kind of do that and, and cover it off. Luckily with Norak kind of blocking the doorway, there isn't a lot of air getting out of the room anyway, uh, out of the cave here. Uh, but you set your, your tree branch into what are still too hot. Like, the embers are still too hot, but this is just, you know, a, a, just a... It's not a magical branch of any sort. It's just a chunk of wood. So if it if it gets too damaged, you can just grab another. Uh, but you set it in there uh, vertically and, and begin the incantation. Uh, ten minutes go by as the rest of you are probably, you know, eating and, and uh, preparing for, for sleep and so on. Uh, the tree does erupt from the ground and begin to kind of make this bowl shape that, that it begins to emit this, this uh, semi-translucent dome. Uh, in the midst of it, or sphere rather, it's it's not actually home just a sweet dome. home. What are you guys doing? Enjoy it. It is by now. It's midnight. It's late. So yeah, so we're right, going to sleep. If I uh, got Pietro keeping an eye on the entrance to the cave, I'll take uh, this watch. No rock. I, I gotta say, if 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 the giant comes out, I, and I feel weird about asking you this, but can you? go and try to be diplomatic with it or i just don't i, mean, I love you i'm not gonna lie i love you big man you're absolutely fantastic and do you feel pretty confident talking to the giant making making make, maybe a shell in the cave do you think you could do that well we can at least try to reason with him i'm going to i'll tell you what i'm gonna do i'm gonna make myself invisible and i'm gonna make the boy invisible and then we're gonna hide in the corner and try not to get slapped around by you know, seven hundred pounds of man meat in the shape of a fist. <laughs> well, just uh, their village isn't too far away from here, though, so he may not be the only one. All right. Keep in mind, by the way, he may have trouble with this dragon too. If you need common ground, that's actually a really good point, man. Thank you. Yeah, it's just something to let you know. Yeah, just obviously I'll try to talk to him first. There's no reason for us to start swinging. No, you know? not at all. He's going to, but we'll, we'll at least try to be diplomatic. So. They'll probably be very confused, honestly. They'll come in here to see this. Yeah, especially with the unnatural winter right now. We probably would expect anybody in here, especially very small lowlanders that would get buried under anything more than three feet of snow. So. All right. We well, have ways around that. <laughs> it's called a fine broom. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I've told you what I'm going to do. I'll try to keep Avar safe best I can. Avar, so you hear if, what I said? Yeah, so if um, if you, if the, you know, something shows up, you're going to turn yourself and Avar invisible? Well, I, we could wait until after we are conversating, but basically sure. if anything goes sideways, we're going to go invisible and we're going to go hide in that corner and try to avoid any kind of, you know, physicality. We okay. don't want to get hit. All right, Avar? All right. Uh, I can I can do that, but I mean, if 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 we need to fight, I, I know how to shoot my bow. She's okay, seen it. But, but She's seen be, it. She knows gonna I can shoot safe. my bow. We're gonna hide safe for a minute and just play it out and see what happens. Okay, Wait, so we hide safe and then I shoot when they don't know that I'm looking. No, just just don't shoot. Tell you what, don't shoot until I tell you to shoot. All right. I'm gonna say a key word. I'm gonna say the word ginger snaps. And if I say ginger snaps, then feel free to shoot. But not until then, okay? okay. Just to be All safe. Right, I'll, I'll have I'll have my, my bow knocked and, and the arrow ready. And when fine. you say ginger snapped, I'll I'll, I'll shoot. That's it. fine. You can just, you can hold that. Just a suggestion. Maybe don't shoot your arrow from the back of the cave. Wait until you can sneak out of the cave so you're not you know trapped in there. Just and for the love of God, don't don't shoot your arrow. <laughs> don't shoot it. Do anything if we're talking to it. All right. Okay. All right. Until we know otherwise, this is a friendly enough person slash creature. So, giants, giants aren't aren't friendly from what they well, used friendly, to say. They're not friendly. They're not friendly, but friendly enough. Like we're we're gonna try to make mutual uh, acquaintance with it and see if you know. We're gonna try first. I'm just letting you know. Don't don't shoot things if they haven't done harm to you yet. All right. You okay. Know, there's that old saying: the friend or no, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. We all hate the dragon. Presumably. Yeah. They hate the dragon too? Well, hope. We think so. I mean, I don't know why they'd like it. I would assume you would eat them. Dragons are not, not. Dragons are not to be messed with, so for all we know, this person or creature might hate the dragons just as much as you do. Maybe we can all work together. We won't know, but just don't shoot them with an arrow until we know. Okay? Okay. All right. You see Shoke um, 
kind of shaking his head very carefully. You've seen him do this a few times, of course. He has to do it exceptionally carefully now that his head is not so attached to the more. Um, and, and he kind of... Someone tried to fix that? <laughs> Does anyone have it? <laughs> I'm getting I'm uncomfortable. Offered. Yeah, Artemy tried. Needles. You know what? Here, here, I, I can... Let me... I've got some knitting needles that are fucking <laughs> creepy and weird. Uh, I can try the, using these out. And um, I'm not attuned to my Marathosian needle, knitting needles. They still function uh, as needles, but... Yeah, but they are knitting needles. And I imagine was... they're pretty big and weird. You, you actually saw a moment um, when Artemis had approached to try to... Right, it, was, it was literally right after the fight where his head got kind of half knocked off. Uh, mm -hmm. No, sorry, it was... Was it was it after that, Fox, or was it still... Yeah, it was after that one. Okay. It was a minute ago. Um, yeah, so she tried to help him, and he was talking with her. This was before you, it was before the mm -hmm. run, basically, that it got worse. Um, and he, he said th some things specifically to Artemis... Uh, Funnily, in fact, actually specifically about Pogo that were kind of important there, but he did not let her do it. She she was clearly okay. trying to, and, she, and he did not let her. All right. I forgot about that. Never mind. Sleep time. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, is taking first watch then. Yep. All right. Yeah. Um, then everybody, you know, the, the tree is, is ready. Uh, Shok stays out as well. Artemy, you, you know, he, he kind of gestures to you that you can stay inside like he's not saying go to sleep but you know he, he's going to stand at the doorway anyway um so you know it's up to you if you if you want to but uh or however you want to handle that but he is he is just kind of um you know standing not in the doorway because he can't he can't stand up all the way but he's back from it enough that he can still see out of it um with his hand uh, uh kind of just resting against the wall there and just staring out um but other than that he's basically what the fuck i said that to ignore um, anyway, so he, he's still, you know, kind of also uh, keeping watch at the moment. Okay, well, I'll just stay in the back then, um, take out one of the books, and um, feed the two little um, mimics that are on the broom. Okay. Um, then you... Wait, are uh, they on the broom? Yes, they're on the broom. They're attached to it. She was like, trying to... at all times? Yes. <laughs> Okay. You're gonna get bit in your vagina flying that thing around. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm assuming you put have... them at the end, like the handle part, you know? <laughs> yes. the... Yeah, I put realize... them on the handle part. Sarah did not realize that they're attached 24 <laughs> 7. Mm. So when you're cuddling with a broom to keep it, you know, from being yeah. scared, you're afraid it might the, the, the mimics might latch onto your hand instead? Or when I'm riding it all day long. Yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't put it to where, like, uh, I put them on the broom, but, like, near the back of it where like you know how the, the broom has like the that's fine brushes I, I suggest not telling sarah that they're on there 24 7 she <laughs> may accidentally squish them <laughs> okay and i know you can't see me but accidentally was in air quotes <laughs> yeah <laughs> like they're spiders or something <laughs> like they're insects <laughs> Yeah, um, she doesn't like mimics, and the broom is not a mimic. She refuses to accept it. <laughs> she refuses to accept it, but it is, and I'm trying to make more brooms. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, anyways, the the rest, uh, go ahead and give me a... Just roll a flat d20, Fox. Fox, you got that coming? Yep. Wow. Okay. Um, you don't notice anything. Uh, it seems to be the, the fur. Are you are you keeping watch for four hours or just two and then going to do your trains? Four hours. Okay. Then I'm going to do my trains. Okay. Then um, the, the four hours goes by of your reading um, about two thirds of the way through. So, you know, two and a half hours or so. Um, uh, Shok does kind of set against the wall, like he sits down with his back against the wall there, um, kind of half turned towards the, the entrance, still staring out. Uh, you do see his eyes kind of nod off a little bit occasionally, but apart from that, he's still kind of staring out the at the you know the cave entrance. But other than that, it's been quiet. Nothing seems to happen during that time. Okay. So the four hours comes to an end. Uh, what do you? You guys didn't arrange a watch beforehand, so what are you? What are you doing at the end of the four hours when it's time for you to trance? I guess I'll just trance, because there's the alarm outside. Okay. All right. Then uh, you 
begin your your you know normal sl I'm calling it sleep but obviously there's just the, the transportion of it um, and at some point after you, know, you, you immediately or at least it's not immediately um, uh, recognizable to you as, as far as what uh, specifically how far in or what time this occurs there is a booming shout from outside um, and it is unintelligible to everyone except for Norok uh, as you may have expected uh, but it is it is a, a, a booming gibberish what does it sound like <laughs> I'm assuming it wakes all of us up oh yeah yeah it's it's it is booming enough that there's like a little bit of a rattle in the stones it feels like like a B five O foam kind of rattle. Uh, I feel some similar rattling to that. in my stones, guys. <laughs> ben, did you see that? Oh, there it goes. It was uh, loading back up. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'm going to um, stand up and can. Oh, everyone, be cool. Be cool. Can, Hide your stash. Uh, do um, can he hear me outside the bubble? Since we're inside, you know, the tree fort, or does it block sound? Uh, it doesn't block sound, I don't believe. Does it? Fall? I can. Uh, it does, but I can make it to where you can talk outside without leaving. Okay. okay. Which I'll do that. Cool. Uh, you did see when you, when you got to begin to stand up, though. You do see Shulk has already kind of righted himself and stood up and grabbing his great sword. Okay. And he's and standing in the doorway. Gonna, just gonna tell him that uh, we're just here to rest, uh, not trying to take your spot or uh, cause any trouble. We're just looking for a place to get out of the cold. Is he in the cave yet, or is he just outside the cave? Uh, the alarm did not go off. You just heard All the right. booming coming from yeah, somewhere. Right. Out. Still outside. There's a booming response. You guys are hearing Norok and this, you know, this this voice replying back and forth. And I would say that you guys probably recognize the languages. It's the language is called Lurg, L-U-R-G. Uh, but you wouldn't be able to, rec you know, understand the words necessarily. I'll step out. All right. The bubble or the whole cave. Well, outside the bubble, I guess he can probably see me, or you know, get to where he can actually see me. Okay. And then okay. repeat myself, you know, basically. Can we shoot through this bubble? I'm gonna give him. <laughs> Wait, how long does Bardic Inspiration last? I should know this. How this yes. fucking ever. Okay, and you can't leave it without it dropping, right? Yeah, I can't, can't leave, leave without it. dropping. Okay, so what if you and at least the kid and Pogo? Yeah, I'm gonna give him. I'm gonna give him Bardic in Inspiration. The bubble. Okay. Yeah. I'll go out and see if I can reason with him. Yeah. I will get out of the bubble, and I'm just trying to stay in the shadows as best as I can along the wall. But I'm getting closer to the cave entrance. Along the wall, inside the end, inside the cave. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm just going to be closer to the entrance, but still, hopefully, not visible. Okay. He shouted back to you after you came out to the entrance, and he could see you. He shouted that. And I'm casting shadow skin. <laughs> You're casting what? Shadow skin. Okay. Oh, this is already... I'm just watching from inside the bubble. I am oh, just in case. Dude, my AC is 13. <laughs> <laughs> Should have stayed okay. in the bubble. I'm not going to let them go out there by themselves. Uh, <laughs> it's a uh, conversation. I'm going to tell him that uh, they're not captives or food, that they're companions. He shouts back. Mm, no, I mean, if there's room, you're welcome to share with us, but uh, there, my friends, no arms going to come to them. I like that none of us are going to be able to actually understand it either. <laughs> you just hear like, well, yeah, you just hear, yeah, one really big voice and one kind of big voice. We're hearing, voice. we're hearing what I imagine like a deaf dude sounds like when he comes. <laughs> <laughs> Boy. You keeping this thing off us? I So I'm who's actually sure. still in the bubble? Is it me, just me, Artime, and uh the boy? Or is Shok think, still in there? And uh Zim, that's right. No, Shok is up by the front of the cave. Yep. Oh, Christ. Norok, Norok, Norok had to front. elbow past Shok to walk out. What was that, Nazim? <laughs> oh, Shok's in the front, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to let him know that uh, we've faced many perils together, and they've always been true. So, 
Smaller not, my friends. All right. <laughs> uh, you see, I just loaded a map, so we'll give that a second here. Uh, you this see is why him. Talking doesn't work. <laughs> it does work. <laughs> it really. This, this, you guys had a lot going against you in the first place. Like, as Norak had told you previously, the Velg tribe of the Frost Giants up here uh, have very uh, immediately animosity, or immediate animosity rather, to any uh, small folk, to lowlanders, basically anything. The Yogg, they're, they're like just, they're not even allies with, they're just uh, uh, tolerant of, but mm -hmm. definitely not elves, halflings, can and so I, on. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. Based on what Sarah can hear from Norak, oh, well, no, no, she can't understand Norak either because he's talking right. in his yep. language, right? Yeah. Can I? Can Sarah tell by the, just the tones of their voices how this is going? Probably. Um, I would say go ahead and give me a, a charisma check, um, and it'll be a low DC. So. Nazim's oh, pulling out his, his leather swatches and just kind of eyeballing the color to make sure uh, it matches. Okay. Uh, yeah, for sure. You you can tell this is this just turned violent. Like th there's the the uh, uh, tone in the voice of coming from Great. down the slope a little bit. Yeah. So just... I want to, as soon as Norak goes to make a move, I am hitting him with a spell. As long as I need to be thirty feet from him. So. From Norak. Yes. Okay. You're right. hitting uh, Norak with a spell? Yes. Got choke it. is the wrong size, but I'm not, I'm not going to bother fixing it right now. So you guys just deal with mini choke. Yeah. So uh, knowing this is going <laughs> bad, Sarah is getting ready. Okay. So this slope is is quite a ways down, but the the uh, frost giant that is walking up it is like, even though this is this is a very deep slope, he's basically looking straight at Norak's feet. That's how tall he is. Uh, quite quite large. Uh, Norak, you recognize this is almost certainly a scout. Um, and he lifts as he's kind of trudging up up the, the snow towards you. Uh, he pulls a horn, like a like a big uh, uh, like a mountain goat's horn, off of his belt, and he blows into the horn. Um, everybody that's in the cave, uh, which is Pogo and Avar, did everybody else already leave the cave? Like Nazim, are you still behind Shoke? I think Nazim's still in there, and uh, okay. Artemis still in here with us. We're still in the bubble. Okay. Quote unquote um, safe. Okay, that. Okay, if you, Nazim, you're still in the bubble too, then. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Then this the, the changes things a little bit. So Sarah, you are outside to be able to see boat or to see uh, Norak. Yeah, I'm trying to stay as like close to the wall and hidden as I can, but within okay. 30 feet of Norak at all times. Okay. Uh, put your shadow skin on there too. Uh, I'll have to fix that effect. That one's really ugly. Um, anyways. As the the horn uh, rattles the the inside of the cave, like the kind of the, the walls of the cave here, there is sound like ice cracking, um, and everybody that's inside the bubble, you see these shapes begin to push out from the walls, like liquid pour, like a uh, water uh, uh, pouring out from cracks between the stones, and as soon as it's outside, it begins to solidify into ice, uh, and three ice elementals come out of the walls uh, around you inside the cave. Neat. Now they are, uh, they're, they're surrounding the bubble, but they're not in the bubble, they're just inside the cave. I don't have the cave portion of it, so we'll just, mm -hmm. we'll just use the area that you guys are in as if that is the, the cave itself. Uh, just to, to kind of provide some room there, Ben, I'm going to move you down a little bit and Sarah too. Yeah. Um, the, it is extremely dark, so unless you guys do something to create light for yourselves, Norak, you can't see this form heading in your direction. Uh, Sarah, you're probably the only one that I can actually see properly. Uh, you know what? There's probably a little bit of. I've got uh, 30 feet. Of, yeah, no, Nazim has uh, 30, vision, 30 feet of dark vision. Um, Artemis, did you leave any kind of light up from the dome? Um, A tiny bit. Like when we would have gotten a little gun up, I would have put my light spell. Okay. Um, then in that case, I'll go ahead and put uh, light spells 30 feet radius. What's the radius on light? Well, I'm not sure if we can cast, cast spells outside of the, uh, from inside the dome, outside the dome. So, like, can you do that? Can you cast spells from no, inside the dome? No, it's a 20 foot radius, 20 and dim light for another 20 feet. Okay. Uh, you can't cast out of it, but I would say a light specifically, just, just regular light, uh, would still pass outside of the dome. 
Got not it. magical effects, but just we'll just say in, in the sense of light, uh, you know, being a, 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 a natural uh, effect, despite it being created uh, magically in this sure, case. Sure, sure, sure. Just because I hate to ruin all your plans, could you like stick an arm out and cast nope. a spell and bring it no. back? No. <laughs> uh, no, your head would have to be out as well. We actually we did that once before. I think Artemy had to stick her head out, and then it would have broken the dome. So somebody else did it instead, or whatever. Yeah, uh, but everybody but, else could do it, right? Uh, your head and arms, maybe, but it's yeah. you, you would still be then, you know, potentially at threat from the uh, ice elementals that are surrounding it. Uh, I will tell you though that the ice elementals you guys recognize did respond the moment that the horn was blown. Uh, so you guys do recognize that that uh, that was a you know a cause and effect there. Um, so go ahead and give me initiative, everybody, and I'll get some battle tunes going here. All right, can I hit Norok with my spell, seeing that there's a bunch of babies? He's still, yeah, he's within range that you'll be able to before you're, you know, since you were kind of readying that. Great. So this I... might be too loud. Hold on, hold on. Okay. That audio level okay? Is that not too loud? It might nope. take a second to start yeah, playing yeah, for you guys. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can hear All right, haste. Let me get these guys in initiative here, too. You guys remember how to put yourselves in initiative? Yeah, still in the. Oh, sorry, uh, I didn't start the. Yeah, I got it. There you go. Sorry about that. There you Perfect. go. Perfect. Pew. Oh, so it says the dome is opaque from the outside, and any color I choose, like, but transparent on the inside. Where's the initiative? And I can yeah. also make can, the can dome choose. itself to Basically, light up. Basically, they can't yeah. see inside, but we can Correct. see outside. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Where's the initiative again? Uh, right click your token. And then you'll see a little uh, sword and shield combo to, uh, icon to the bottom right. It'll say toggle combat state. If you, you click that, it'll put you. Click the initial what? Right where it says it on the main character page. You can just. Oh, click okay. It. Yeah, the word. Yeah, that's what I do. Sorry, I'm, I'm still trying to figure this out. Where's the word? Where's the word initiative on the character page? It's or, right. Uh, top right. Movement. So, oh. uh, yeah. Sarko, I don't. So I was gonna you, add. Pietro Bring up your character sheet, Sako. Oh yeah, we can put. Yeah, have it out. I know he's not actually here yet, but uh, I'll just put him like over to the side. Um, Sako, top right of your character sheet, where it says armor yeah, class and movement initiative. There you go. Uh, and I even had, and I never remember to do these. I never remember to show you these. I fucking, I usually make like between say two and five or so visual aids for most sessions. Half the time you guys don't see the stuff, so it never ends up mattering until later, and then I show it to you. But I actually remembered to show it to you this time. So this is the not that you guys none of you can actually see it yet, but when you do get around to it, this is what the creature looks like. Ooh, this neat. is the one that's storming its way up uh up the, the mountainside there. Alright, Ben. That's a get, sexy man right there. You get a <laughs> plus two to your AC, so your AC's two more. You also it's get not a two an more. additional not a two. <laughs> it's not a two. You also get an additional action per turn. You can use it to attack only one weapon attack, just one, or dash, disengage, hide, or use an object. Okay. Thank you. The uh, the ruby in the in the hilt of your uh, sort of stolen hours is a neutered version of haste. It's like a light version of haste. So the the, the effect is similar. Uh, so that probably sounds vaguely familiar for you there. Um, I probably should have made the map for the cave area as well, but the we'll just treat the area that you guys are in as if you're still inside the dome. Um, so, you know, just, just you guys are still safely in there right now. I'm going to move you guys around a little bit just to have the kind of dome shape. Uh, that'll suffice right there, right? Uh, you guys are welcome to rearrange yourselves in the middle there. I don't care, but at least that way you guys are kind of still safely inside of the, the domed area. Show All right. In no, so, well, Shoka, Shoka's in the entrance, sorry. So actually, I'll move Artemis over here. Shoka's, Shoka's outside of the dome. He never went in. Um, so I'll just I'll move him down here, actually, since he's you know he's still in the mouth of the cave, technically, but we'll just treat the mouth of the cave as if it's where uh, Shoka and Sarah are standing. All right, then that puts Norok first. So you can hear the crunching of the snow, know this creature is coming towards you. You can't see it, and you're just in the kind of the, the last uh, trickling bit of light is where you're standing, essentially. Then I don't even see him, and I think he's still out of my sight. So, yeah, I'm guessing it'll be a minute before he gets here. So I'm gonna go see if I can get one of those elementals. I was gonna say I was gonna yell out. There's some ice people inside the cave. Also, I have movements locked. This is not my turn. 
on that turn. Oh, god damn it, this stupid add on. Uh, hang on. That makes sense as to why I couldn't move. Uh, free movement, free movement, free movement. Try it now, G. There you go, cool. We're good. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna move Pietro off to the side. Oh, never mind. Norak, you come in rushing through the cave then, and you see these these three, uh, like, crystalline chunks. They, they just look like chunks of ice. They're not really humanoid in shape uh, beyond just having the, these kind of tendril-like legs almost that they're walking on that just sound like cracking ice every time they step uh, that are that are all three converging towards the dome in the center. Okay. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is rage. Okay. Yep. Did that work? Yeah. Okay, cool. And then I'm going to see if I can hit this thing. I'll use... Actually, you know what? I'm not going to use... Actually, you know what? Okay, yeah, I'm going to use my stack on this one. Okay. Damn, right away. Uh, do I need to hit Weapon Master, or is that... No, that macro, um, I actually, I can make it correctly now, um, so they, I, I haven't fixed it yet, essentially, uh, but I actually just uh, uh, found out what the problem was on Thursday about that. Same thing for the Sharpshooter for your game, Justin. Cool. So, for right. now, just do it manually. Yeah, so, right plus attack will give you advantage, and your attack will be at minus five for the Great Weapon Master. Yeah, you gotta click it. Hell yeah. yeah that's fine. Alright, uh, 27 will hit. Okay. Even with minus 5, it'll be 22. And um, do you have to add the Vile of Fire for the Great Weapon Master and the Rage? Or is it automatically on there? Uh, we'll have to. Well, the Rage, I think, will automatically. We'll look at it here. Okay. All right, so the two is yeah. So so it'd be plus. Uh, wait, what is your rage damage right now? Is it three? Did it go up? You know, I. Does it say under my, under my rage? Okay. Yeah. Let me go look. Uh, let's see. No, it doesn't have the table there. Let me pull it up just in case. Uh, barbarian. I'll put that back in there for you. After the. 8.0 update. I don't remember if I put it back in or not. You are 12, so it is plus 3. Yeah. Okay. So the 4 is from your strength modifier. No, it is in there. Okay, it's just outdated then, because the 2 oh, is yeah. in there, so it's actually more than that, or one more than that. Alright, so that makes it 14, um, plus the 10 from Great Weapon Master, so 24 uh, for the first swing. This this uh, ice crystalline creature that is approaching the, uh, the, the dome is paying zero attention to you. You don't really know where the head is, or if there's a neck or anything of that shape, or you know, that, that uh, kind of critical place to look for. So you just start hacking away at this chunk of ice. Uh, as soon as the, the blade of the uh, of the sword impacts it, you see that, that it kind of cracks it away a little bit. It still certainly hurts it, but it seems to not do as much damage as you would have expected. Yeah. So, uh, resistance, I'm guessing, slashing? Or probably... Uh, slashing, or... you would guess, after first hitting it, you feel like it'd probably be slashing and piercing would have little impact, but, you know, something like bludgeoning or, you know, force damage, things like that might. Okay. All right, then um, I'm already swinging, but I'll remember that, though. Um, force damage. So... You do have, I mean, just as a reminder, you do have a weapon that you can do bludgeoning with if you so choose. It's up to you. Oh yeah, I can, um, I forgot I can uh, uh, flip Vulcan Wrecker over and use the back end. Yep, the hammer uh, side, exactly. Uh, I forgot yep. about that, okay. The, um, I, I've already swung once with my sword, so I'm assuming I have to continue to use my sword. Yeah, stowing in the middle of it. Uh, honestly, not, you're, it's, it's, te feasible. it's technically, it is technically a free action. It's, uh, you know, if you would really do so and say go ahead, uh, it'll just be, you know, a very minor difference in, in whether it hits or not. Yeah, um, again, I don't think that would be fair, because again, Norak's sure. just gonna, I mean, he did notice that first hit, but of course you're gonna swing and swing again, you're not gonna wait long enough and sit there and stare at it in between hits, you know, so yep, that's, that's fair, no problem. Uh, go ahead and make your second. Oh, is that your second attack there? The 13? Yeah. Oh, that was the damage roll, never mind. Oh, yeah, I can just hit the same attack again. There we go. Yep. And also, you'll have Bardic Inspiration for like 8 oh, yeah. more minutes, so. Uh, 15. Well, you weren't Grateful Master. Wait, Rapid Master for the second one, right? Just the I first. know, I can only do it once anyway. So yeah. It's right. regular. Uh, AC is 15, still hits. Cool. And 
since I'll have a sword hit and a, another hit from Becky's haste. So. Yep. Sweet. Uh, 13. All right. Uh, similarly reduced then. He he looks like oh. there, there's a significant crack going down the center between where uh, where the like the front leg and then the two back legs. It's walking on three very awkwardly um, uh, on these kind of appendages that it's created for itself. Uh, but it, there there's a significant crack going down the center. If you were able to hit it hard enough, you might be able to split it the rest of the way. All right, so I'll see if I can aim for that same area. Okay. Not with that. Not with the natural one. Well, actually. <laughs> You're close enough to me now if you're back in the cave. Except you are oh. inside the dome and can't cast outside of the oh, dome. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Well, this, this is a, that was, uh, since it's a feature, it's uh, my, my uh, uh, you that's can't fair. roll once. Yeah, that's fair. You no, know, it is. Yeah, exactly. That's a feature. That's not an arcade. That's not yeah, a magical effect. Luck. I would say that you can. Yeah. yeah. Halfling right. feature. All right. Go ahead and reroll the G. All right. Thank you. Actually... I feel like that's how D and D games go. Like especially once <laughs> everyone's past level ten, there's all made some random shit. There's a, <laughs> there's a, there's Thumbs a, up, buddy. <laughs> a web show called Um Actually. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, it's it's fucking like I love the show. It's actually really, um, really fun. Actually, um, from College Humor. Yeah. Uh, and it's specifically that kind of stuff is is correcting yeah. people about nerdy shit. Uh, yeah, you do have Bardic Inspiration, so 13 would not hit, but if you want to use your Bardic Inspiration, you could potentially, you know, roll a two or better. I think I'm going to wait a minute on that, because uh, I still got to deal with that giant coming. You got you a shitload of time. Yeah, you're the yeah. only one, too. You've got to deal with it, but nobody else. <laughs> okay. I got this. Yeah, I have a plan. <laughs> All right, yeah. 20 will hit. Okay. The third one, you you bring the sword down, but it, there's a, a little jutting piece of ice that you didn't uh, uh, account for as it's kind of making the shambling movement forward, um, and the blade just kind of careens off of it, and you bring it back down for the fourth whack. Uh, fourth one does hit though, uh, for another seven or eight actually. I think you yeah you round up, so eight more damage. Uh, didn't quite cut him in half. Uh, it, it, it's still connected, and you notice that the ice is starting to kind of fill in the crack here. It is a slightly smaller form as these chunks that you cut off from it. Uh, these these uh, splinters of ice are just cracked in on the floor and beginning to melt into the into the uh, you know kind of semi warm dirt inside the cave here. Uh, it's still injured. It's not healing or anything of that sort, but it is kind of reforming itself into its previous elemental shape. That if your turn. That's it. All right. That brings us to first one. Uh, the first one at the north here. Uh, seeing that you have, uh, you know, come in and, and tried to attack one of its brethren, it is going to first, uh, as it reaches the the outside of the of the orb. There, uh, it kind of brings this this these front leg, this this kind of you know arm essentially that it's created for itself up in the air and then smashes it down against the side of the dome. You all hear the ice crackling. The dome does not give. There's no shake. There's no nothing. Um, uh, yes, you do, actually. Uh, and I appreciate you pointing such out, Justin. Uh, it is a minus D4 <laughs> on at least. <laughs> I didn't want to say it. I was just like, uh, uh. Um, We're all still exhausted, so... Yeah, uh, uh, yeah you guys didn't get your long rest yet, so Norak is still at a minus D4 for all of his rolls. Sarah at minus D6. Let's Artemis make this Pogo shit interesting. Yeah. Uh, thanks for reminding me there. Um, I need to get the friggin' effects. Like, now that it's actually all functional and shouldn't break things anymore, I, I can get the effects effects rebuilt uh, for all the exhaustion and stuff, so I'll put that on my notes to do. Let's see. Uh, as well as Rage and Great Webmaster and shit. I had to bring a Now, is that <laughs> rolls for just, like, saves and checks, or is nope. that Nope. Anything you roll a d4 too? on. Pretty much anything you roll a d4 on. D20? Yep. D20. Or D20, yeah, D20. Minus a D4 on that, or a D6, or whatever, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's good Chuck Sarko. saves. <laughs> uh, Justin, you see the, the the GIF in Embers? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot, Pogo. If you guys are curious, I literally titled the whisper, I do not want to yeah, say Yeah, he's actually, it, yeah, verbatim, it says. all have it? Because I was a whisper, so I was hoping you'd be like, oh, I forgot that you guys are all exhausted. He's like, uh, no, good, no, good job, I Justin. Just, thanks, look, I, thanks I, for reminding me, Justin, credit. buddy. It makes you to get it credit. more fun. It really does, yeah. I mean, it, I think it's fun. The, I think it's the, more. I love the opportunity to completely wipe out and fail. I think it's a, it's. Well, a, it's you say a, that now. <laughs> no risk. There's less reward. I like the reward from the risk. Yeah, yeah. To me, this game is no fun if everything is just being pulled punches the whole time. So, mm -hmm. exactly. um, 
the first slam, though, smashes against the uh, the side of the dome and nothing occurs. Uh, it then, uh, it doesn't melt, but it kind of reshapes itself with all this, this constant crackling of ice uh, as it kind of forms its way around and is, is allowed to. The, the elementals are actually allowed to share space uh, with the other one who was still approaching the dome and brings the, uh, the arms back up to uh, slam into Norok here. Another uh, like some an 18 big... G. You still have your bonus. Yeah, you got your bonus. 19. How'd you get to 19? Haste. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So that uh, he he brings it down, but you just using the hilt of the sword as you were just chopping away it. It's a it's a colleague there from his friend from work. Uh, as you were chopping into the other one, uh, you kind of just just dive out of the way enough by shoving the the hilt of the sword into it. Uh, that is it for its turn. Uh, the second elemental is the far one. It is uh, si seeing that the, these are intelligent enough creatures to recognize this, that the dome was not uh, uh, permeable. It moves its way out towards the entrance and sees a floating uh, uh, halfling there Bring in it. shadowy form. Is going to... Uh, let's see... Uh, give me a DC uh, a strength save. It's only a DC 13. Uh, damn it, I can't give me something that I'm at least halfway decent at and I can use <laughs> shield against. <laughs> uh, you said saving throw? Yeah, DC, thir uh, DC 13 is what you got to beat. Strength. There. Oh, barely. No, no. Oh, no, wait, that is even wrong. That's not a D4. I need a D6. Yeah. Shit. Oh, well, nope. <laughs> uh, with with that, then the the creature uh, that, that the rest of you from inside the dome see flying towards the doorway there uh, uh, flies towards the doorway and you hear a yelp as a, uh, a glowing, a, a very demonic sounding yelp. In fact, because she's in shadow skin, uh, a, 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 a flit of this purple shadowy form goes flying out through the night uh, down the hill a little ways. <laughs> Uh, oh, I got to down two. the hill a little ways. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, you gone. <laughs> oh, that's not too bad. That's fine. It doesn't do that much damage, yeah. but uh, okay. to target uh, flung 20 feet away from the elemental in a random direction and knocked prone. Uh, so you are knocked cool. down here and face yeah. first into the snow. Uh, you didn't hit anything on the way, uh, but you did the kind of whirlwind that surrounded this creature just flung you out into the snow uh, and you take nine damage. And that brings us to Artemis. Oh, Artemis, you've got some choices to make here. <laughs> yeah, you guys being inside the dome does give it's, you it's, some tactical op some options here, but it, it's difficult to get anything done from inside. So. Yeah. Um. Okay. So I can't cast spells out of it, but can I still shoot my bow out of it? Nope. I think so. Um. Well, it, actually, click, click the tree insane. again. Yeah, I think. I think. One... Yeah. It's not. It's specifically magical effects that can't pass out. Yeah. Uh, it's just one. magic. Let me see here. Um. Oh, it is. Uh, question: Am I still in the oh. broom? Since it, you know, swatted me. Um. Hmm. And you. So you were holding onto the broom, anyways. It wasn't trying to take you off of the broom or anything of that sort. Give me oh. a deck save, and it'll be a low DC of whether or not you could hold on to it. Is all. It wasn't trying to, to you know, specifically separate you from it at all. So, you, you still face planted, but whether or not you lose the broom and you know drop it off into the snow, uh, barely. It would have been a ten. So, uh, well, mm -hmm. never mind. Yeah. So <laughs> the broom nope. is separated as well. What Yay. do you mean, nope? No, I was just saying, nope, not even barely. Oh yeah, 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 <laughs> yep. Uh, so the broom flung out of your hands. It's not far enough away that you lose sight of it or anything. Uh, it is over in the snow over there. I just dropped it on the map for you. Uh, I, I, shit, you guys. So th it's going to be difficult for you guys to be able to see much of anything, especially since it's dark and you guys don't have like a, you know, a good light source out here. So sure. you know, the rest of you may not be seeing this, but at least Sarah can. She's near enough to it. Um, Fox, that is. Uh, what is that actual spell? That is Leoman's tiny hut, right? Uh, it's yeah. treehouse. Yeah, treehouse is the same, is the modified spell. version that yeah that yeah. you have, uh, but tiny hut is the actual spell that I based it on here. Uh, let's see. Creatures and objects within the dome, when you cast, can move through it. All other creatures and objects are barred from passing through it. Which so doesn't mean objects. passing out. Yeah, objects barred from passing out of it as well. Uh, spells and other magical effects can't extend through the dome or be cast through it. Uh, you know what? Let me, let me see if there's been a sage advice about it. 
Yeah, because I feel like the way it's written, like sticking your head out to yeah. do a spell is probably. Yeah, because creatures upon. and objects within can uh, within you cast the spell can move through it freely. All other creatures that are inside of it are barred from passing through. I promise you, we're not the first people to talk about this. Oh, question, for sure. I already a, found. It's a. Yeah, it's it's almost a game breaker. Yep. That's why I brought it like, up. I love ruining Jeremy's plants. I'm thinking, like, the closest would be running completely out of it, moving completely out, casting, and then moving completely back in. That's yeah. the closest thing that I can think of would yeah. be. It has been answered in Sage Advice, uh, which is, Sage Advice is uh, one of the developers, Jeremy Crawford. Uh, he answers questions on Twitter for exactly this kind of stuff. And the question oh. asked was, uh, Lima's Tiny Hut, which is what your spell is based on, sounds like the perfect siege spell, uh, fire arrows out of it, remain safe, etc. He responded with, the intent is that objects can move, emphasis on move, out of the dome, usually on a creature, not be shot out. And so he can't uh, what about... So yeah, so we could step out, shoot. You could step yes, out. You, absolutely, and then you can. Uh, yeah. Artemis can. I can, but I can't. Artemis yeah. can't. Yeah, Artemis yeah. has to stay in the dome more. Fucking stay in here. <laughs> <laughs> we've got, we've got this child to protect now. We're parents. <laughs> God. Uh, you guys are, you guys are the collective parents of this orphan now. <laughs> Until we'll have to right. keep this up for a minute to see it what else we can do. To raise a child. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so no luck there. Weird. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some magic stones, and I'm going to um, pass them to Shoke. Okay. Uh, he is outside, but you can toss them, you know, you can get his attention and toss them, like, to him, and he can grab them, yeah? Yeah. Uh, you'd have to stick your hand outside of it and then throw it, but yes, then you could, because you can't throw the stone yeah, through the yeah. dome. But yeah, we'll say that you can do that, you know, that they're, you're not really making an attack roll, you're just kind of tossing them to him, so that's fine. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, then he, he catches them. How many? Does it, is it three, right? It's three. Okay, all right, so you throw him the stones, then uh, he... Did I? I did not put him in. Uh, oh, I didn't put uh, um, Avar in initiative either, and he wants to shoot his bow. I'm kidding. Fuck him. Was... <laughs> Pogo hasn't given him his safe word yet. Yeah, exactly. Nope. Yeah, he's still he's still waiting to hear pineapple. <laughs> or yeah. ginger no, berries. Ginger snaps. Ginger snaps. Ginger snaps. Ginger snaps. Ginger snaps. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, any bonus actions at Fox? Oh, that is a bonus action. Any actions? Yeah. At... Um, no. Okay. All right. Then that'll lead us to Sarah. Great. So I'm going to move over to my broom and get on it, which will put me. By the way, thank you for this because I no longer have to use a sorcery point. Will, which will put me just in range to cast Polymorph on this gigantic giant. All right. <laughs> oh, let's hope he's not that wise. Hopefully. All right. Um, he is going to roll here then. So we still say that. Choose, choose yep. something that like the cold won't fuck up oh, yeah. if it's twenty-two. Well, you know. Wow. No. No. Plus we're gonna five, make you re-roll that. Okay. Because I got one left. Sure. <laughs> so we'll. I did not think you would have a plus five on wisdom. So the the frost giants frost giants are um. Let's hey, see, Ben. Ben, they're an ancient much... and wise creature. <laughs> uh, how much information... wise in the ways of the world? Um, how much information would Ben or would Norok have have kind of prepared the rest of the group on what the Velg tribe are? I gotta grab some water. Probably back guys. Anything? Probably you... not. Probably not a ton, really just letting him know that, you know, there there was frost shards or there is that live around here that I would just close. Okay. All right. So I don't think I would have waited too much too much detail. Alright, no, that's fine. That's fine. That's hey. that's that's fair for what I would <laughs> what I would say Nora probably would do, but if you had a you know, a good reason for you know, Nora kind of preparing them for them in case coming up against them or whatever, uh, then they may have gotten oh. a little more info, so he's got a plus five, he needs to roll a ten or lower. So Alright. <laughs> oh god. You see sixteen with advantage. No, no, that was well, a 20. far. <laughs> well, he has advantage though. So does he still roll with advantage, even though I make him re-roll it? Yeah, or I mean, well, it's a it's a re-roll. re-roll. Yeah, he's, he's it's a permanent. Well, let's look at Chrono Shift. Let's see. Uh, let's see, within thirty feet of you, makes an attack roll, ability check, or saving throw. You can force a creature to re-roll. Yeah, if it's just a regular re-roll, then he would re-roll it with his own stats, which is advantage. So damn it. Yeah. <laughs> My plan. So, 
he also, I'm going to go ahead and tell you too, he also has one one use, one individual use of legendary resistance as well. Um, so, I mean, if he had succeeded, he could have just chosen, all right, Fox, he could have just chosen to succeed there if he had failed. You know rather. what's really funny about this is I, I wonder what Jeremy was typing to Norok to create this conversation. That's what I'm curious about. Uh, yeah. I asked, I asked ben, no, 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 no. I like to keep it a secret because otherwise <laughs> I, I don't want to be upset about it. <laughs> um, yeah, um, that, so. How, but, how tall is this giant? Uh, 30 feet? 30 feet? He's, no, 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 he's not quite that big. He's, uh, he's uh, giant. between 18, 20 feet or so. He's, he's sunk into the snow a little bit, so it's hard to tell. Great. So if he's 20 feet, he can reach up like what, 26? 25? Like, uh, if he jumps, he could probably get up to like 35. Shush. <laughs> Sarah's afraid if of he's, if he plays of basketball, <laughs> if he plays basketball, 40, 44. Um, I'll tell you that the, although humanoid in stature and shape, and even the image just looks like a big blue skinned human, uh, giants in this world are, are a little more. Uh, primal. They're 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 a little less evolved, um, and the shoulders don't lift very well. The arms aren't intended to go up above the, the, the shoulders. You don't feel like he could get his hands above his shoulders very well. Okay. Think so... uh, think Game of Thrones. The giants in Game of Thrones. You saw those, right? Yeah. Okay. So the the kind of they look like giant Cro-Magnons, and the shoulders, the, the arms, were 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 four legs. They were for walking on, or you know, they weren't for lifting up above the head. If that makes sense. Okay, Sarah's going to do something she's not looking forward to. So she used 10 feet of movement to get there. She's on okay. the broom. Okay. She would use the additional 40 feet of movement that is left because the broom gets 50 to go straight up in the air. Okay. All right. Uh, that puts you, well, if, if you're not moving forward or back or anything, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just I'll, I'll move the broom up. out of the way. But if you're just going straight up, uh, then we'll put you up 20 feet then. Whoops. Oh, shit. I meant to show you guys this. Uh, okay, so this add-on I expect to break. I don't expect it to work, but it looks really cool. If it does work, it'll, it'll be fun. You guys can, you know, at least tinker with it, and we'll see how, uh, you know, how, how nice it is, uh, if it's actually worth using or not. Uh, all of you can go ahead and do this. Just don't go crazy on clicking shit in the meantime, because it's going to be Pogo's turn here in a minute. Um, Right-click your token, and then very top left, you'll see a swords, cross swords icon. Click that. What is that? So this whole UI thing here is basically all of your kind of like the the HUD thing. If it stays functional, and, and again, I expect this one to break, but if it actually is functional and remains so and they keep it updated, we could use this instead of the kind of the HUD version, um, which is the, the bar across the top that you guys have if you click on yourselves. But this version of it has all of your shit in there, you know, with, with kind of a little pop outs and stuff, which looks cool. I don't know if you guys, you know, if you guys don't like it as much, you could use either or, I really don't care. Uh, but you can slot like your favorite items in the thing above, your portrait, uh, all your skills and checks, all that shit are all there. Uh, it's pretty cool. Like it, it looks like it'd be fun. It kind of looks a little video gamey, um, but if you you know if you like it, you're welcome to use it at least. Um, but again, you know, don't be surprised if it does break. So for now, at least is, we'll, we'll I just do leave it like there. that. It has like uh, uh, actions that a lot of people forget about on here. So like you'll yeah, forget, the dodge like, and so the on. Yeah. The hide action and stuff. Yep. I forget that that's even a thing. Yep. I used to actually put those on everybody's character sheets back in Fantasy Grounds just because everybody would forget about them regularly. Um, but it, they, they kind of get in the way a little bit. So it does, yeah. you know, it's, it's nice having those there as a reminder that they are things you can choose to do and they are very often tactically viable. So, all right, that's it for Sarah then? Uh, yeah. What? No, wait. What? You didn't bonus action, so. Yeah, I my bonus actions. Um, uh, wait, does Chrono Shift? Chrono Shift is your reaction, okay. Yeah. Um,. You know what? We're gonna... I don't have a whole lot for bonus action, so we are going to... How many does she take again? I don't know. We're gonna call Shan. Right okay. behind the brush, right? Uh, you can see him, actually. Yeah, you're, they're, I think, the only one that can see him right now, so... Mm -hmm. All right. She takes how many resource points? Okay. Uh, we'll go ahead and put her on here for you. Uh, she makes her initial attack, so go ahead and... Oh, she's got to roll initiative. Okay. Yeah, she doesn't get to attack right away. She has to roll initiative. There you go. Then that puts her. Uh, <laughs> that is the worst possible roll for her. Uh, right before you in initiative, which means that it's going to be oh. an entire turn before she gets to go. Well, that's fine. <laughs> she's behind him, so he doesn't even know that she's there. <laughs> uh, okay, maybe. maybe. Yeah. All right. Uh, then... He is very wise. 
Yeah, he is, he is very wise. He's also it, focused on the tiny halfling that tried to turn him into a snow bunny. <laughs> which is right, what I uh, would do. <laughs> then he'd be lost. He'd just be lost in the snow. You'd never find him again. That's fine. <laughs> All right, uh, the other ice elemental, then, uh, is this the injured one? Yes, this is the injured one, uh, is going to uh, pass into Norok's space. Um, I'm trying to pick it up here a little bit. We've been moving a bit slow, and I don't want to be here forever. So, uh, is going to. What's up? I don't see myself on the map anymore. Nope, oh, nope, there I am. Yeah, you're outside of the cave to the southwest a little bit. It was on um, chair, so. I oh, gotcha. Ahead. Yeah. Uh, all right, is going to move into Norox's uh, space. All right, Fox. Um, no, he's eh, no, he the Norox's too strong. He'd be able to tell that, so he's going to try to to slay him instead. Um, at Norox here, a fourteen G. That's not going to hit. Ben, fourteen doesn't hit, right? But a twenty-one will. Yeah. Is Ben is his headset? <laughs> uh, does his computer no, just... mess up or something, Becky? You have lost no. connection. There we go. Yeah, I heard you now, Ben, and I saw you leave Foundry and come back. So, computer must have Uh, yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's no fourteen. Which right. twenty-one does? Yeah. Yep. All right. Uh, seventeen <sighs> damage uh, halved. So. Uh, 18, 16, 7. <clears throat> and that brings us to Avar. Uh, Avar uh, kind of leaping up uh, behind Pogo, still inside the dome, uh, yanks his bow up and, and pulls it back. It, like the, the oh, yeah, bowstring, bowstring right by Pogo's ear. Uh, if he lets this go, like Pogo could lose an ear <laughs> uh, just because the bow is so close to him. Uh, but, you know, he's not he's not firing. I'll, I'll, I'll wait. Um, it, it, what, what do I do? What do I do? Stay in this dome for right now. Calm down. Stay in the dome. Just try to just, you know, keep it notched. But as long as you're in this dome, you're safe. We gotta let the let us kind of handle this for now. And I want you to stay as safe as you can for right now. Okay, are, buddy. Are the, are the ice guys gonna get us though? If we just stay here, are they gonna get us? We'll take care of it. They Don't can't worry. come in. They can't. Yeah, we'll be all right. Uh, but we can. They... Okay. Um, I'll I'll just do what you say. That's it for his turn. It's your turn, Pogo. All right. Uh, okay. So I am going to uh, move out of the dome. Now, based off the way the dome is, do I climb like a ladder down on the tree? Yeah, Artemay like Artemay makes these notches, <laughs> like a like a rope ladder notches almost in the side of the tree. But you could probably, uh, well, never mind. At your height, you probably don't want to jump out of the dome. No, uh, I don't. Want, well, I do. Up. I'm very. I'm very. Uh, I do. That's have true. A, That's true. You could probably. Yeah, you could probably roll or something. I don't want to jump all the way out. I'm going to go ahead and climb down a little bit, and I'm going okay. to use my my little legs to grab spawn to uh, a thing, and then I am going to cast shatter on okay. the uh, at a ten foot uh, sphere on the two ice elementals that are directly in front of me. Okay. And I'm going to upcast that to fifth level. Although I lost my character sheet because I was playing around with the new one, and <laughs> I, I'll try it. Why not? Why don't I try this? Uh, as a main action, cast spell, and it's a second level spell. Shatter. Oh, this is all sorts of shit on it. Okay. So what, the, uh, the add-on or shatter? No, uh, the the add-on. It like it's pretty cool. It isn't up it? on the whole page. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Does it show in the uh, if I click on it? Try it. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, so it doesn't show automatically. Let me go ahead and. There should uh, be like a like a you know clickable spot though that would, you know, cast it like that would. Let's see, second level. So I'm going to cast this at. Yeah. No. So so click click the icon for shatter. Yeah, and then I'm doing it here on the uh, afterwards under cast spell. It still gives yeah, me the okay, same thing okay, as gotcha. where I'm yeah, cast yeah, yeah. it. So okay. I think I'm good there. And then. Um, all right, let's see. Is that definitely what I want to do? Yes. So I am kind of hanging upside down by a limb as I cast Shatter. Okay. And they have to do... Uh, DC 17 con save. And since they're made of uh, ice yeah, they're, or yeah, something... Yeah, they're, they're at disadvantage, right? They have uh, disadvantage on the saving throws. All right. Uh, three for the first guy, natural one. Uh, second one, the one that is actually injured, uh, has disadvantage as well. 
A natural one also. Both of them natural do. ones. <laughs> Alright, let's see what kind of damage this, this does for it. Big money, big money, no whammies, no whammies. Uh, so Sako, you're up next. Uh, 28. Alright, so the first one, uh, the, the one that uh, had already been kind of split down the middle a little bit by Norok uh, uh, carving away at it with his sword, uh, is uh, when, you, when you cast this, you are pelted in a not good feeling, but not enough to cause HP damage, just a shower of tiny little icy needles pelting into your skin, like being shot with a BB gun in a thousand places at once, uh, as that one just explodes into ice crystals. Uh, the other, taking 28 damage, is significantly injured, but still in, you know, still uh, in a cohesive shape. All right, now, I have a question, because I'm mm -hmm. st uh, pretty much right next to it. If I go back in the bubble, will you get an opportunity attack? Um, I actually forgot something there. Uh, okay. So... Not only is, I think, hang on, let me check. Uh, immune to those and vulnerabilities. So, not only is is <laughs> there's a bit more to it than that. Uh, it wasn't just that the uh, thunder damage does normal. He's actually vulnerable to it, meaning he Ooh. takes more damage from it. Meaning they both shattered into, into just a, a, a rain. Of, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and tell you that yes, okay. they would have gotten an opportunity attack if you retreat. Yeah, you know, perfect. They were uh, I'm going to pull myself back into the actually. Wait, wait, wait. You know what? I might uh, as a bonus action. Uh, yeah, why not? I'm going to... I like... This is... You know, this or being exhausted doesn't actually do too bad on mage on users. On saves. Yeah, so yeah. far. I mean, well, there, there are yeah. points when it does, yeah. All right, let's see here. Uh, I am going to as a bonus action... <laughs> I'm going to. No, I'm not. I can't see the other one, and I'm not going to do that. You can see the other ice elemental. No, but I can't see the one way down the hill. Yeah, you can't see the giant. Correct. Watch the um, and yeah, it's... dog harassment. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's got a body. So All right. after. Yeah, we can take a break here. Once, uh, as soon as, uh, yeah, as soon as. Uh... Uh, Justin's done here, then when we get back it'll be Sako, or, yeah, Sako's turn. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cast another Bardic Inspiration on Norok. Uh, okay. Uh, he hasn't used the first I one. Didn't. Yeah, he still has the first one. Oh, he still has yeah, the first one? Okay. Then I'm going to cast Bardic Inspiration on Nazim. So, okay. Nazim, you are going to get uh, an extra D10 in the next 10 minutes at some point to use for anything. And then I'm going to uh, oh, wait, no, because I can't cast it into the bubble, so I can't uh, use that either. Well, okay, you're not going back in the bubble I will pull myself then? into the bubble, and then I'll use my yeah, bonus action. Yeah, that's fine. That'll work. Okay, yep. So, right. uh, then, Nazim, you have inspiration. And uh, then I'm going to look at uh, Avar and be like, see, we'll go ahead and take care of this. No worries. But I'm uh, safely oh, okay. back now in the bubble. Okay, I, I want to help, so uh, can I shoot him? N not yet. I don't know how to die this fucking kid. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> no, no, not yet. <laughs> while, while you're in the middle not of like, yet, trying to keep yourself alive. <laughs> right, uh, take a quick five, wall. everybody. Yeah, yeah, take yeah, a quick yeah, five. Uh, Sokka, when we get back, it's your turn. I gotta walk around a little bit. My legs are getting all... Ugh. Weird. All right, I'll be back.
Yo, suck off. You already know what you're gonna do. Oh yeah, I got one quick question though. For uh, reaction, what's the uh, rules for reaction spells? Uh, it basically depends on the trigger. Right. So, so that either the spell will tell you, or if it's something that, um, like an opportunity attack or something like that. Uh, but I think you, I don't remember if you have Warcaster or not. Um, anyways, the the spell will generally tell you is is what the reaction is. Like you, for example, you have counter spell and hellish rebuke. Those are your yeah, two reactions. Yeah, I was spells. looking at Hellish Rebuke, but it yeah. looks like the creature has to damage me. And, yeah, that's uh, when you get hit first. Yep. How big is this sphere that I'm in? Uh, 10 foot radius, so it's a 20 foot from diameter, side to side. Okay. And I can shoot through it? I just can't nope. shoot from inside it? Uh... No. What? To both. <laughs> well, like meaning same. like if, if you were on one side of it with the with the, so say you're both outside the dome, you and your target, and the dome is in the middle, it can't pass through the dome. Gotcha. It just absorbs yeah. it. Yeah. Unless it's a magic missile, and then it just does whatever. Well, the magic missile would go around the dome because yeah. magic missile hits automatically. It'd be fucking neat up. Yeah. Magic homing missiles. Or do you want to do some more uh, Mass Effect, Justin? Uh, after the game, me and Lee are going to go for a walk, but I might be down tonight. Uh, um, I played... Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, um, so I, just, I can still get pretty fucked up in gold. Like, jeez, I don't know. I, I think I just need better weapons and all the uh, add-ons to be upgraded for the weapons. To, like, yeah, I mean, you, you, don't have, you don't have... You don't. I just the, can't kill the, shit fast enough. Yeah, you don't have the stuff really for doing gold yeah. just yet. But uh, I can still do gold, and like I'm not that bad. Like I usually end up still at least getting a 25 or 50 assist, and then I still have yet to get 25 fucking kills on a gold mission. <laughs> it's just so hard because yeah. it's because at that point, like other people are one shotting, uh, fucking like uh, what are those big uh, bruiser brutes? The brutes. You get like yeah. one shot brutes and shit. Yeah. Um, I but, can with uh, my uh, with my uh, combat I no, can, uh, combat engineer or whatever. Yeah. I can do really well on silver, like uh, silver. Like I can do like fifty kills in a match on silver yeah. with my new character. Um, Which one are you? Are you still playing your human vanguard? No, I just uh, I'm trying oh, to unlock destroyer that gold that and yeah, the seven destroyer. destroyer, who's yeah. uh, who's actually not a piece of shit. Um, although he does have, I, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't. I would res I wouldn't spec him the way I spec him. I, well, I if you get him up. to twenty, you can rebuild. You can start him over again. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to do that because I added it a lot of points into this top thing, which turns him into a, like I can't remember what they call it, but he's like you turn yourself into a turret. A turret. Uh, it costs fifty percent um, of your shields, but your weapons are forty percent stronger and like twenty five percent more accurate. Blah blah blah. Yeah, the problem is he's not a strong enough character to where if I lose fifty percent of my shields, I'll fucking yeah, you can't survive get that way. murdered. And he's slow too when he's that. He basically tanks up. Um, so I would take all my points out of that and put them into the multiple grenade launcher options because those things end up super powerful. Yeah, he's supposed to be, he's like a war machine type thing. He's supposed to be like yep. the, the, the exactly. uh, Iron Man guy. Yeah. But I really like that I don't have to worry about gun weight because none of his powers are affected by weight. Yeah, most of the soldiers are like that, or at least yeah. a bunch of them are. So like, that's kind of easy for me. And um, so Devastator like mode. he's got a, yeah, I don't like it. I don't like Devastator mode. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. The guy doesn't, can't take a hit hard enough. Yeah, um, but the, the grenades are super for him. The the build that I do shotgun and my the... my sniper rifle with like fifteen round clips. <laughs> That's good. A shotgun and the Cerberus Harrier, the two that it recommends with the Harrier yeah, being the primary gun. That. Yeah, I don't have that. it's, it's a, just a good assault rifle. But I have I just I did just get a new assault rifle, but it's 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 okay. Um, I, I it's funny because when I when I die on gold, like die die, when I get my head fucking crushed or whatever, or eaten yeah. by one of the witches. Um, I'll watch the other guys. Everyone on gold uses the same guns. Most of them do. Yeah, it's I mean, like the, the same there's, there's very three specific, guns. Yeah, it's called the <laughs> it's called a meta, uh, a, a build meta, and there's basically the ideal builds in pretty much any yeah. game. Those are always called a meta, uh, and and that game's been out forever, so everybody knows what the you know what the ideal yeah. builds are to be able to solo. I want uh, whatever that fucking. Content. Although I will admit, you know what I want? Uh, there's some shotgun I think that charges up. They yeah, the Geth Plasma the Shotgun. Yep. Like whatever, that thing is fucking... I've been watching yeah, players it's a good play one. with those. It's nuts. Yep. 
and it, the 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 it's not a pellet. The thing that it shoots out is this big like ring, this big glowing yeah. ring, uh, and it has a decent radius around it too, so it'll actually hit multiple enemies. Yep, it's it's fucking cool. Yeah. Uh, that thing must be blood. I hear Becky back. Is Ben back? Okay. Yeah. Talk to you back. Yep. All right. All right. All right. Then uh, technically, Justin Pogue or uh, Pietro would be next. So, um, uh, go ahead, Sako. And then as soon as Sako's done, uh, Pietro can go. Uh, I would say, how far do you think? Do you think he would have noticed? He would have definitely noticed like the horn blow and stuff. Yeah. Um, I had he's, him keep an eye on the front you know, of the cave. How, where do you think he'd be? You can put uh, him probably. I mean, if he's flying around, I'd say he'd probably be out here over that tree. Uh, so we'll just say he's like. 20 feet up ish, some of that, 30 feet up. That's fair, yeah. All right. Um, I. Well, think am... here, think on that. We'll let Nazim go, yeah. and then, and then okay. you can take the intro after. Sounds good. All right, I'm going to step off. outside the bubble um, and uh, fire through Ice Elemental. Let me uh, target him real quick. Hold on. Okay. All right, am I out of the bubble here? Yes, for sure. You just say you are. Yeah. All right, so since we just got one ice elemental, uh, I was going to do a magic circle with all three of them and lock them down, but since we're down to one, I'm just going to use all three Eldritch Blasts on this one. Okay. That token matches the picture you showed perfectly. So that's actually what was I was surprised by, is the artist that I got this from is the same one that I buy the, the custom yeah. tokens from, uh, Devin Knight. Yeah, and he does the drawing too. Yeah, well, so nice. what I was surprised by is that when I no, he didn't. He did, that drawing isn't. It's I don't think it's his anyway. It's so just I literally just found it when I googled it, uh, and I looked at it. It's like that's literally the exact yeah. fucking token is, is that art. It's cool. Uh, so I'm, I'm guessing he was he. You know, because if that's the the um, official art, you know, uh, then maybe he just took that to draw the token from. Because yeah, it literally matched it perfectly. Uh, Twelve or twenty-two will hit, and the fourteen will. Uh, fourteen and eleven will not. Do you have you have your inspiration that uh, that Justin gave you? So you yeah. can use your inspiration if you want to add to the fourteen, for example. Yeah, let's add to that fourteen inspiration. One d ten, right? Yep. Yep. Pretty sure you 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 get it. I think they'll have to. Oh, he better. can't. Yeah, he can't roll less than a one. So, yeah. Uh, so we're oh. fine there. Uh, it was 2d10, but it doesn't matter. Even the one that you rolled was still enough. Uh, so uh, you'll have to be kind of off to the side a little bit, like right there, to be able to not hit Norok as you fire them. Uh, but two of the Eldritch Blasts will connect. Uh, go ahead and roll the damage for two of them. And remember, because of your glove, I think it is, one of them gets an extra plus one. So that's 13. Go ahead and roll another one. Oh, damn it. Big shut up. Nice. All right. Uh, for 28 total... Um, the uh, he's, um, so th these these elementals don't have a ton to them, and as you as your your bolts of this black electricity impact the the creatures uh, or the, this last one here, uh, big chunks of ice just go flinging off of it, uh, pelting against the side of the dome, and then and then collapsing into the into the dirt, uh, hit it you know clinking off the rock wall and the ceiling there. Uh, it's in rough shape already, uh, but you did see of course that the the giant has the ability to to summon these, so it seems as if you know you may have more uh, before long. Uh, any bonus actions? Uh, not at this time. All right, then that is it for Nazim. What's uh, Pietro doing? Uh, Pietro is going to fly around uh, about 15 feet above. Uh, well, I don't know. Let's see if he can even get to it. Well, uh, you can you can tell him to fly towards the giant if you wanted. Yeah, I'm going to have him fly. <laughs> Sorry, when I clicked on him, that little ad thing on the main action came up and just cracked me up. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Uh, he's got, I think, six. <laughs> he's got the giant beak icons. Yeah, it's just, it's like, what the <laughs> Yeah, fuck? the image is way too big, yeah. Alright, yeah, I'm gonna have him fly towards. Uh, ben, you're breathing on the mic. Thank you. That's about 55 feet. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna have him fly the rest of his movement. Well, let's see, for his normal thing, up. So I'm gonna have him go about 40, tell him to go about 40 feet up. Okay. Um, and a total of forty. I'll have 20, him. So. Yeah, I'll have him just dash the further. Now it looks like he'd be able to see this creature, so I'm gonna have him just dash and fly, basically forty feet ish up, and just kind of flying around and just singing as as loud as he can uh, the songs, to, the words to. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, like. 
jingle bells the best he can. <laughs> Just right. singing jingle bells in his bird voice above the head of this thing as loud as he can. Okay. And that's his whole turn. <laughs> All right. Uh, then that brings us to the giant himself. Uh, he is going to be rushing forward. Uh, Pietro is up too high to be able to get any kind of an opportunity attack, but Shan will potentially. Uh, so, Becky, go ahead, if you're assuming you want to do an opportunity attack with her. Yeah. Okay. Bye. It's just I'm a regular attack. Right now, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure the giant's going to get a 13 strength. Uh, 17, his AC is only a 15, so it does hit. Yay. And he's probably going to beat this, but you know. <laughs> Saving throw, yeah. yeah. Well, you were rolling that as Shan, not as. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, she has to roll that. Yeah, yeah. No, he has to make a DC. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah the, the creature has to make it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Good luck beating an eleven <laughs> or a twelve. No, you got a twenty-three, so you beat it by ten points. Eight. You never know. <laughs> and advantage on it too. Yeah. Right. Uh, let's see. Up the hill here. You can make it to there, uh, rushing up the hill, throwing a, like a rooster tail of snow out behind him. Uh, Shan, in her shadowy form, is basically covered in in uh, this this falling snow that that lands back down on her as he runs his way up the hill here, uh, unslinging this hammer off of his back as he rushes forward. He can't actually uh, uh, reach anybody with it at the moment, uh, but you see him reach down into the snow and just pull, just just grab this this. Uh, uh, arm load as he, as he kind of just plumps the, his uh, hammer down into the snow. Uh, an arm full, like elbow, you know, from basically from shoulder to hand uh, of this just compacted snow as he cr crunches it down uh, and is going to fling it in the direction of the entrance of the cave, uh, which will be Nazim is his closest target. He's throwing it straight over over Shoke because uh, he couldn't oh. reach Shoke with the. Did Nazim go back in the thing though? Oh shit! Did you go back in the dome, Nazim? No, my movement stopped uh, when I reached. Oh. Okay. You what? Your movement stopped what? I ran out of movement. I went outside. Okay. All right. That was uh, a bad decision, he... buddy. <laughs> well, the oh, uh, 13. Hey. Uh, actually, uh, the team's AC is 13. Oh. With DC Lacanth Cloak. Uh, so it actually doesn't Should hit I that hard. Use, uh, my feature. What feature? Uh, Entropic Ward. Uh, click it. Uh, I'm using the new system. I'm just going to click the new new system. That's fine. As long as as long as it pops up in the chat. Uh, I don't think it's uh, once for. So if you click the icon for it, is what you would do. Uh, yeah, in the new system that you showed us, it doesn't do that. It does. It did it for me. Yeah. Uh, it is features. No, that's Mr. Garcanum. Uh, use feature and Tropic Ward. Yeah, it does. Uh, you the so Sako under where it says reaction, and you click the use feature. Then you'd see Entropic Ward and Warcaster there. Click on where it says Entropic Ward, and it'll give you all the info. But if you click it, if you click that purple shield icon, then it'll pop up the usage config, and you, so consume available resource or available usage and resource. So just uh, leave it on both of those. Leave both checked, and then hit usability. If you just wanted to see the info, you could uncheck oh, yeah, both. But yeah, there you go. Uh, let's see. Once for a short rest, when you uh, when a creature makes an attack roll against you, you can use a reaction to impose its advantage on the roll. If it misses you, your next attack against the creature has advantage. Okay. All right. So he will re-roll the attack roll. Then uh, thirteen was his first roll. So the biggest issue I'm seeing with this cool thing down here is it doesn't work with all items properly if they're not like perfectly coded. Like there's some stuff that doesn't show up under. Like certain like spells items, or whatever, certain there? items, certain okay. spells, yeah, something like that. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't get to a chance it's, to play it's, with it a whole lot. But... It looks like everything that's under the standard compendium seems a little work fine. Um, all right, so the, the the it still would hit Sako. Boo. Yeah, and it is. I didn't think that was that much damage. Actually, it was twenty nine damage from the uh, icy boulder. Uh, does it knock prone or anything like that too? Let's see. Uh, no, just bludgeoning damage. So 29 damage from the from the boulder hit, uh, and then he, uh, reaching down with his left hand to grab his hammer back off the ground, he grabs the, the horn back off of his belt again and calls to the elements. Um, I'll call it to nearby elements. Uh, DC 14 wisdom check. If I can find it. Kind of cool. It's a cool spell. It's like a, some druidy ass shit right there. 
<laughs> he got a natural wah, one. Wah. The That's elements, the yeah, the elements don't respond. That guy so far. Uh, uh, and that is it for his turn. Bring us to show the element of surprise. He was surprised. <laughs> it sure was. Nothing happened. Uh, Shok is going to rush in towards him and slash at him with his great sword. Or great axe, sorry. Uh, first attack. I like that. This very. This is very good. Like game wise, this is probably where everyone realizes. Like, oh, oh, wait a second. He can <laughs> fucking. He's got a horn. They'll keep doing this shit. Yeah, and he likely will. It, it, so yeah. he has. Um, so he has two legendary or uh, uh, villain actions as well. So after another person's turn, I didn't do it on his first turn because I had him summon those three initially. So just basically, his, his turns were just to use those. Um, as so basically, he didn't do it at all during the first one. But after anybody's turn, just like those snow sharks, uh, he can do one of his his two per turn. Uh, and there's some other things you guys haven't seen yet that he can do that that could be bad too. So. Uh, both those great axes will hit, though. Uh, so damage from both here. Uh, seven for the first one, and thirteen for the second for a total of twenty, and that brings us back to Norok. Uh, Becky, sorry, I didn't add Shan's damage from her bite there. How much was that damage? I think it was only nine. Let me go up and double check. It is. I just We've got to get okay. rid of that hammer or that fucking horn. Okay, so he's got a little bit of damage uh, to him. He is bleeding, but it is like this crystalline, uh, almost almost viscous, uh, light blue, like syrupy color. What you doing, G? One badly injured elemental in front of you that, that Nazim just blasted with his uh, black lightning. And then you can hear the giant has just stormed its way up the up the hill and just attacked your uncle. All right. Um... Yeah. I'm going to... Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. But he wasn't too far away, so I should be able to reach him. I'm going to um, uh, head towards the giant, actually. So, And I will use my uh, the action from the haste to disengage. So that way the element will Okay. Away. All right. So. so no opportunity attack. Leaving the to deal with the elemental by himself. <laughs> As you go rushing down the hill, uh, you can just barely make out the shape of this frost giant. Uh, that is just gargantuan compared to even to Shoke. Shoke is actually one step in front of you, uh, but you are uh, well. Shit! Now that you're out of the radius, you can't see him. Yeah, I can't see him. I, yeah, I just... you can. You can just barely see the shape of Shoke, but you can. You can still try to hit, but it'll be a disadvantage because you can't see the giant. Okay. Um, can I actually hit from here? Can uh, I try. Yell at, uh, no, you... can I yell at him to take one step over and one step forward and then swing? Um, so I can see. Yeah, you can. It's you still. So the attack he'll still have disadvantage on. Uh, the, the Norak would still have disadvantage because he can't see him. But yeah, you could you could shout to Norak as you see Norak kind of charging out of it and seeing this kind of bewildering look that he can't see where he's going. Uh, you you could shout to him to kind of give him basic direction. Great. So go over one and go down one, and then you'll be right next to Shoke and hit. Swing. There you go. And you should actually now just ah. barely be able to see. There he is. <laughs> I, can see, <laughs> yeah, I can see what Norark's vision looks like, and there's just this little okay. bubble, and you can see like half of a hand and half of a foot, and that's about it. All right, sweet. Okay. Uh, now I will try to hit Giant. Yep. Um, I'm not even going to use Reckless this time because I'm assuming he's so big, it probably won't be hard to hit. Probably has a lot of defense. So right. I'm, I am going to use a great weapon, though. So. Okay. But, uh, I'm going to use the sword this time because since he's a uh, nice dude. Sure. How big is that? Oh, I well, never mind. I couldn't see it. Forgot it. See, now I could cast Dancing Lights, but then I'd drop haste, and I don't want to do that because then Nora can't do shit for a round. Yeah, yeah so Nora. like you guys, he's really going to need light out here. Somebody's going to need light out here because uh, uh, it's as dark as it is. He's going to be a disadvantage on everything. <clears throat> what was that, Sarko? Well, I said I got you on the light. Next run. <laughs> Norok shouting back, I can't see, I can't see. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you? Where uh, yeah, that battle, are you? Battle, like, for sure, miss. Even with this, yeah. you didn't roll it with disadvantage, and, and you know, it with a 10, was oh, already missed. Oh, yeah, because I can't see you. Correct, yeah. Right. Go, go ahead and make your second swing. You could potentially have gotten a natural one, actually, so go ahead and roll the disadvantage version, or disadvantage roll, just to make sure it's not a natural one. Uncle in half. 
Yeah. <laughs> he's already he's already kind of cut you know through a good portion of, on you know one very important uh, uh, spot. So an errant move by Nora could be pretty deadly. All right. So yeah, it would have been a ten. The twenty-one yeah. would have hit, of course, but with disadvantage at the ten. Go ahead and roll your second attack. Remember to use disadvantage. You can just hit the attack. Oh yeah. Yeah, when you hit the attack, it'll pop up the box asking if you want to do advantage, disadvantage, or, or normal. There you go. God, your dice are so ugly. <laughs> uh, 15 just barely hits. Okay. You could still use the same damage button, though. Wouldn't matter. There you go. Uh, wait, uh, hang on. That was Great Weapon Master? The first attack missed. So. Okay, all right, all right. Then uh, eleven damage. Then uh, he, you see him as you just hurled this this chunk of ice uh, in Nazim's direction. You go kind of charging beneath it, uh, pulling the sword off of your back as you run. Actually, we already had the sword out. Never mind. Uh, charging towards him as you run. Uh, you see him kind of leaning down and grab the horn uh, and grab the, the hammer as he's standing back up. And you bring the the arm down, cleaving into his forearm as he's where he's holding the hammer from. He roars and balls his fist back up where he's holding the, the, the uh, horn like he's about to strike you with it. Uh, do you have a third attack still? Because you didn't get your, your sword this time you and you used the haste. Attack. But he used his haste for uh, um, for disengage, right? Yeah, um, I'm going to Frenzy Rage though, so I actually will have one now. Because I can use my bonus as a um, attack. Frenzy Rage? Right. Sure. So, okay. Yeah. All right, go ahead. And I'm going to aim for the horn. That, that means another level of exhaustion, remember when this is over, and you're already like at a place where exhaustion is going to be difficult, so keep that in mind. If you want to, go right ahead. We're going to have to polymorph you into a mouse just to carry you around with us. <laughs> Isn't he back at one exhaustion? He is right now, but after the fight, he'll be back at two. Yeah, and then... We'll okay, <laughs> just saying. Just point I mean, that you out. Do, you do what you want. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're hopefully going to be able to finish resting after, hopefully, killing this guy, so... Alright, go ahead and make your attack then. Okay. With advantage still, so or disadvantage rather. Yeah. Okay. Alright, uh, eleven will not hit. Okay. Oh, don't you still have your you still have inspiration? inspiration? Uh he does, yeah. You could add your inspiration if you want. Yeah. You'd yeah, have to make a four or higher. Hit. And that was a ten, right? Mm -hmm. What's it oh it's a D ten, yes. Yes! Alright, all right, that'll hit. Go ahead and roll the damage. Are you attacking the horn or are you attacking the guy? Yeah, I'm going to attack the horn. And I'm also going to use my um, Tribal Fury to add another... Uh, well, uh, hang on. If you're doing a called shot, the AC is different. Ah. Okay. Yeah, I'll try to can't. And you can't... Uh, yeah, but you didn't say so ahead of time is the thing. And, yeah, and I did. I actually he did. That. did. That's, yeah, oh, he you did? did? Say oh, shit, I'm sorry. Okay. On, on this attack, not on my first one. I, I forgot to say yeah, it on the first yeah. one. Okay, I, I did not. Okay, I didn't. I didn't catch that. Then sorry. Uh, in that case, a twenty. A twenty will still hit the horn. That's fine. Okay. All right. Sweet. Eleven plus nine for a total of twenty. Out of inspiration. <laughs> yeah, it really gave me clutch there. Down, down. Go ahead and roll the damage sheet. Okay. And then it's another. Um, so it'd be another D six because it's another damage dice. For your um, your tribal. Uh, Whatever. Yeah, is that what it'd be? Because it's yeah, it'd be a, yeah, it'd be the same damage dice, so it'd be another d6. Yeah. Okay. All right, uh, fourteen then. Uh, he where he's about to bring his fist down, still holding the horn in his hand, uh, just you know trying to punch you with his hand. That the horn is just happens to be in it, like he's just too you know too dumb and angry. Uh, uh, so he goes to to swing it in your direction as you kind of step out of the way and bring the sword down, impacting with the just the horn right outside of where his fist is. You see it crack along the edge there. It's still connect like the the bell end of the horn, not the not the part you know the mouthpiece, but the horn part. Um, and it and it cracks kind of a, a big chunk of the the horn out that falls into the snow. Um, it looks like it'd probably still make noise, but you don't know if it would still work or not. Uh, but he, he kind of just, just roars and then flings the horn end into, into the snow and balls his fist back up like he's about to, to punch you. Okay, yeah, that's it. All right. That brings us to the only remaining elemental at the moment, uh, who is seeing that the dome is still in place and that uh, Pogo has shirked his way back up inside, is going to... Uh, uh, fly towards uh, Nazim and try to envelop him in that icy whirlwind, the same thing that uh, had thrown... Can I do a quick question? Yeah. 
uh, there I, I have a feature that is um, uh, cutting words, so mm -hmm. it's a feature, an active ability, and it's just me, I think, yelling through it. Would that be able to go through the dome or no? No. As a reaction. That's, that's, right. um, yeah. Well, shit. You know what? It is a feature and not a, a spell. It's basically it me just effect? literally yelling. No, it's yeah. a, as a reaction to creatures. It's not a mean. Yeah. Well, it, I know, I know what cutting being words charmed. is. Yeah, I know what cutting words is, but I think that's not. Um, yeah. Well, you know what it is. It's, yeah. it's just me talking shit. Yeah, I'd say that you could. I'd say that you could do that because uh, I mean, words can go out, and that's essentially all that is. There's no yeah. magic to it. I I'm just going to um, scream out as I see him going to attack Naz uh, Nazim. Okay. Uh, uh, well, I guess, it, yeah, you know what? No, that's fine. You um, said you were going to do it. It cost yep, you a reaction. I'm going to do it. Okay. Yep. All right. Uh, it is a save on like, Nazim's part. Yeah. yeah. Um, you look like an ice cream cone that's falling <laughs> apart. Uh, Nazim, it's only a DC 13, but you need to make a save. So if you just click yourself, oh. <laughs> Sucko, um, just have yourself, you know, so there's little orange circles around you. And then in the chat there where it says saving throw DC 13 strength, you can click that and it'll roll it for you. Ooh, I don't see any of that. We, I'm just going to click it on my normal old school uh, thing. Okay, so yeah, you can do it that way. But actually, if you click where it says freezing whirlwind, I forget that you guys probably have it set to collapse. If you click the word freezing whirlwind in the chat, it'll expand and you'll see all the text for how it works. And then you'd see the button for saving throw. I legit oh, have okay. never... Uh, normal advantage. advantage. Uh, normal. What was that, Justin? Oh, no, then. Yay, good job. Yep. All right. So the the uh, enveloping wind surrounds you. You kind of hunker, hunker yourself down a little bit so that most of it is just blowing over the top of your head. Uh, he is not able to fling you uh, at a distance. You see him kind of raise his arm up like it's about to, to slam attack at you, but that's all the time that it has to do. It can either slam twice or do the freezing whirlwind, not both. So, All right. It is Artemis' turn again. Has he moved into my uh, sphere of influence here? He did. Yeah, he is, he's in melee range of you, yeah. Am I able to use a Warcaster now? Uh, a spell on him? Warcaster would be if it was trying to leave your radius. It would be an opportunity attack when it's leaving. Oh, provokes an opportunity attack from you. Right. Gotcha. Yep. Okay. Yeah, there's another feature uh, for Sentinel. Uh, Sentinel and I think Polar Master, the two of those together, you can do it when they approach you, um, but not normally. It's only when they try to leave your range. I thought Sentinel was just um, if they attack somebody other than you when they were leaving. That will provoke an opportunity attack, or if they try to leave your radius, provokes it. And then Polar Master, which is part of why Polar Master and Sentinel go well together. Polar Master is if they if they get within your melee range, you get to immediately make an opportunity attack then. So, for example, if you do Polar Master, this is I have this in... in the enemy really in the fucks up my plans as a DM <laughs> when he does that shit. Uh, because, so, so you can use what's called a glaive. You can use any kind of a polearm weapon, which a glaive also counts for that, and that's a 10-foot reach. So I don't get to do that because I, I didn't build it quite correctly. I didn't realize there was a specific point of that. But anyway, uh, you can use you know, spears or anything of that. Ma uh, but <laughs> Max the character. <laughs> No, it's it like it still works fine as a spear too. It's still totally useful with the spear as well. I just yeah. didn't think about the glaive not being able to be used as a uh, warlock weapon. But anyway, uh, if they you provoke an opportunity attack when they get within your melee range as well, so you can have a ten foot melee range. They provoke it when they get to the to that ten feet, and your sp their speed becomes zero if you hit them. So they can't actually get to you at all, Dude, like ever. And you can just do it, do it, turn and you know one turn after the next after the next. Uh, we should just tell Jeremy what we plan to play and have him create our characters. <laughs> yeah. uh, just, just min max against myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, max this out, we'll be good. <laughs> Alright, it is Fox's turn. Okay, um. I'm not really gonna do anything. Um, for, or I'll actually, question. For the choker, the crown of stars, mm -hmm. that is technically a spell, right? So I wouldn't be able to send those through. But yeah, only... it's, a, it's a magical effect. Um, I, I forgot to mention, actually, the you have any way of. Up making me stronger or better when I get back out there to fight this thing? Anything that you have that can make me be, turn me into a giant tree creature, perhaps? <laughs> uh, sadly, no. Alright. Um, I did update that, though, for you, Fox, so that has the like the, the, the permanent effects that it's going yeah. to, the, the healing and the damage version of it. Um, I added those books for you, the six books that you took from the, uh, the Wisdom in Meadow Lake. Uh, as well as the medical book from the clinic too, and then uh, Sako, I added the jawbone into your inventory too. I, I meant to mention those early on, and, and I forgot as all. So sounds good. Thanks. Wait, um, can Pogo or the others see in the dark? Nope. No. No. Okay, I'll give Pogo dark vision then. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So Buff outside. Me out. 
Yeah, yeah. outside they're they're in bad shape because Sarah can see Pogo and Sh or Norak and Shok cannot. That'll mean Pogo will be able to now if he can get outside. Uh, Nazim has thirty feet, so he can see. Um, but yeah, bas basically outside. Yeah, they're, they're having trouble with vision outside anyway. So, so that'll help. Yeah, and I can't cast lights otherwise. Norak can't do anything for an entire round. Yeah, I mean you guys could leave the dome. You don't have to stay in there. That's up to you. <laughs> no, it was just a suggestion. <laughs> Ooh, I know what I could do. Dome. I could cast uh, um, light on a another... Oh, no, it does another action. Oh, my. But I have the little light on, instead. so I could throw that to Norrock if he catches like my little orb. I'll let you... Yeah, I'll let you take the dark vision back if you want to, you know, hold a, you know, a pebble outside of the uh, dome and cast it, then, you know, uh, shit, well, you could cast it, it on it inside the dome, and then just yeah, you know, that's fair. I would say you know, I would, yeah, I would say that it wouldn't drop the effect off. That's fine. Yeah, yeah you could temporarily enchant it. Just grab something from tonight. your pack and then just toss it the fuck out there. Yeah, at least then, even if it lands in the snow, <laughs> that would still be the whole it. radius that everybody, at least you know, in the mouth of the cave here would be okay, able to see the giant. That. Okay. Something that something that won't sink down in the. Well, snow no, because I had already basic. cast light on it. So all I have to do is throw the one I already have in my hand out. Oh, that's sure. true. You did. Good. Yeah. Okay, so you can. So I'll just do that vision. and leave the dark vision on Pogo. Okay. Bam. All right. Then everybody's pretty well covered. Then uh, I'll go ahead and draw a light source for. Do me a favor, Fox. Roll a a Dex check with advantage. Actually, because it's advantage, you have triple advantage. So you'd have, you'd have to roll it three times. So roll three d twenties uh, and add your your uh, Dex modifier. Because of your elven accuracy. Roll one more. Yep. There we hey, go. there we go. All right. Then you, uh, with, with expert accuracy, fling this outside, kind of, because you can't see the top of Norok's head, but you can just barely see the giant's head uh, and figure that Norok must be probably near its feet. So you fling a stone out uh, that is just with, it, with this glowing radiance that lands into the snow beside Norok. Uh, I will go ahead and draw a... Big light sphere surrounding it, and now you guys can actually see oh, <laughs> uh, what this this gargantuan uh, uh, creature is that's, that's uh, approaching. All right, uh, is that it for for Artemis? Yep, yeah, that's all, and I'll be right back. Okay. All right, that brings us to Shan, Becky. All right. Alright, she is going to dash so she can get directly behind him. Okay. That's that's her turn. Okay. All right, yeah, because dash would be your action then. Yeah, she's within five feet. Okay. Um he's a little bit bigger. I'm gonna go ahead and put her there. That's that's five feet right there. Um so she's, you know, at his at his ankles basically and able to attack when the opportunity arrives. Yep. Alright, then it is Sarah's turn. Great. So we <laughs> God, I hope this works. Oh, I mean, it's going to work kind of either way. All right, so we're going to do this, and we're going to do here, and this is the only one I got, so let's go. Light. All right. Yep, at level six. Maybe. Oh, shit. Six? Okay. I don't even have yeah. a level six. It's my only level six. Uh, DC 16 con. It doesn't change the, the con. Wow. Right? All it does is do the no. damage, right? That's... But he has disadvantage because Shan is within five feet. Oh, I see what you're trying to do. Okay, uh, now I see yeah. why you why you wasted her dash. I was saying wasted, yes. obviously in air quotes, because that was smart. All right, I'm gonna uh, say I'm gonna say mathematically, you got about 22 percent chance to 30 percent chance. He has a very high con. He has high and con and high strength. He still and takes with. half damage if he saves. So. That's, well, that's fair. Good. Okay, that's yeah. not a complete level failure. Like that, yeah. Oh, womp. 13? Womp. No, 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 Wait. no. Yes. What? Oh with shit. With disadvantage, he yes. got a 13. He failed. All right. So so that's Damn. full damage at level six. Uh, nice. Uh, let's see. The damage oh, no. is 8d8 uh, with another it's one for 10 each. 10d8. Yeah, 10d8 total then, right? Because it's two for each 55. level. Nice! <laughs> All right. 
Uh, well and it's done. necrotic. Okay. He's not. He's not resistant to necrotic or anything of that sort. So uh, you and, and you haven't used this spell in a while, but you casting it through the snow watches these diseased and and kind of boils and and little uh, 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 pustules and stuff on on these uh, greenish blackish leaves go floating through the air, kind of transposing through the snow as it drifts over towards him, settling on his skin. He roars in fury, and the the bits of whatever crunched piece of the. Uh, uh, horn were still in his hand. He flings towards you. He can't. He can't get his hands up. You know, up high enough to be able to throw it. But he kind of flings these these itty bitty little shards. You feel a couple of them kind of pelt against the broom, but nothing. You know, no damage. But clearly, very uh, uh, damaged. Was, uh, that hurt him quite a bit. That was about a quarter of his health. So, uh, just keep that in mind. Um, uh, of him in in anger, throwing it at you. I'm going to stay where I am, forty feet in the air, and okay. that's my turn. Uh, you're okay. That's right. You're forty feet up. Let me go ahead and update that too. Now remember, this is a slope that heads down to you. So if you move, you know, laterally south, then you're going to be higher and higher off of the ground. Keep that in mind too. Oh. Yeah. This well, is a slope that he ran up. So. I will move like. Uh, That'd probably be about yeah. 50, 50 ish feet, like yeah, 45, we'll 50 ish feet. Okay. I, I want to try to stay out of a range that I think he will be able to hit me at so uh yeah he could probably throw something in your direction but he won't be able to reach up and hit you if, if, if yeah. that's what you're concerned with okay yeah. all right uh then that brings us to avar uh avar is nervously holding on to the, the bowstring and and kind of aiming out now that the the uh um elemental is kind of in an air form and he's not really sure what to do there he's aiming it out towards although he can't really see him very well the giant in the in the distance there uh, let's see here I mean, eventually, Pogo, you're going to have to just let him hit him. He, he's, he's resisting. He's managing to resist. He's trying to, to follow what Pogo has told him to do. He's kind of he's kind of trembling a little bit. And like, he's holding the bow fine. He's, he says he has good bow control, but he's, like, nervous and not sure when, when to release this arrow. And you know, But he's managed to hold it off so far. So, Pogo. Good job, buddy. Ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right. Um, I am since you went out of the dome, by the way, and then came back yeah. in, he's like the, the the string is not over your ear anymore, so you're not at Good. risk of losing yeah, it here. Walk in front of his, go. I'm just gonna like use two fingers, gonna push it away from my face. Like, well, it's not, the arrow wasn't pointed yeah. at you. It was just if he lets the string go, it's gonna yeah. cut through. It could have cut through your ear, but you're moved now. So anyway, go ahead. All right. Uh, as and the horn is broken, or the horn is still there? It's it's in bits. It's in it's crunched bits. all over the ground. Right. He dropped it on the floor or into the snow. Uh, Norok damaged it enough here. that it was, was broken. You know what? It's I still think I'm going to go ahead and cast... Uh, I'm going to jump, uh, go climb down from the uh, bottom of the dome, um, and I'm going to look out at this creature that's now uh, enveloped in some light that I can see, and I'm going to cast Hex okay. on it. Dude, there's still a nice elemental right beside you. I know. Okay. I'm not worried about him. I'm worried about uh, this <laughs> creature. Assume yeah. that his evil take care of it. You guys just, just abandoned his <laughs> yeah. evil to deal with it by himself. So, uh... I mean, the giant is the bigger threat. Actually, sure. I should double check on this. It says when I hit it with... like, a... badly hit by a big old rock, yeah. though. It says when I hit hit with an attack. Uh, is that just a melee attack or any attack? Uh, if it doesn't specify, it would be spell attack as attack. well. All yeah. right, all right. Um... And then I am going to go ahead and see, this is going to require a con save. I'll probably get that. No, I'm hex is to... automatic. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, hex. Yeah. I'm looking for okay. another option here gotcha. to uh, to cast on it. Um, uh, hmm. uh, does he still have uh, disadvantage on the saves, or is it? Just when only uh, against Sarah's spells. All right, all right, right. that's fair. Position. In that case, I am going to go ahead and cast Toll the Dead. Okay. On him, so I'm going to uh, uh, cast this here. He has to do a 17 DC 17 Wisdom save. All right. Natural Natural one. one. Yes. So. I get to do my normal damage for this. You uh, the and it's versatile yeah, because the versatile he's already hurt. Yep. And then I'm going to roll my damage for yeah, my hex. hex. 
All right, good rolls. 23 damage. Yep. Um, and then uh, I am going to... I'm going to cast, as my bonus action, I'm just going to go ahead and cast uh, my healing spell. I only got one of them. Uh, healing Word on uh, Nazim. Okay. And I'm going to upcast it uh, to uh, third level as well. All right. To be 3d4 plus 4, right? 3d4 plus 5. Your modifier? Your so modifier. 5, okay. Not bad. All right, Nazim, you heal for 13. And then... Uh, what's the, what's the pep talk that Pogo is, is giving oh, Nazim? For healing words? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you should have been back in the bubble, moron! <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, somehow, but somehow, but somehow that makes you feel so much better, Nazim. Yeah, <laughs> you, it makes you set, you like question yourself and think, you know what? I could have made better decisions, and I feel better about learning experiences. <laughs> you know, that makes me realize that Pogo really does care about yeah. me. I feel good about that. <laughs> uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and uh, risk the uh, uh, opportunity attack, and I'm going to try to pull myself back up into the bubble, okay. um, back into it, so All that right. thing will get to attack me again. Yep, as you go to leave its uh, raise uh, a sphere of influence here, a 16. It will I think not you're hit. That. Yeah. I slam back with my elven boots and kick just, it, slam Yeah, away. just as, as your shoe slips through the, the edge of the dome, you, you, you don't feel anything because the dome in, uh, absorbs the impact, but the, the ice crystals smash against it, sending, sending splintering shards all over the place. Is that it for oh. Pogo's turn? That's it for my turn. All right. Uh, with that, the giant then reaches down um, and... I'll use a 100. Uh, not well. a meta, but I'm surprised you didn't use your legendary action to just negate the loss for blight. Um, I could have, but there's there's potentially other things that I wanted to, to you know potentially save it for or that he would. It, it, the, the creature isn't necessarily like he didn't know what blight was going to be. He wasn't necessarily afraid of that, uh, but it did hit you know much harder harder than I expected it was gonna. Uh, you said, but uh, well, no, no, no. what's up? Oh, I was just going to say, he basically has the ability to just auto-save something if he wants, right? Automatically succeed if yeah. he failed on something, yeah, exactly. It takes his one use of, of his legendary uh, resistance, but yeah. uh, he is going to uh, reach down towards uh, Norok, who Norok still, you know, a uh, uh, sword kind of pulled back over his shoulder, preparing for another slash, uh, reaches down and just tries to palm, like, thumb under Norok's right arm, basically around like Norok's uh, uh, midsection around his ribs and and hand, like fingers of his other hand over his other shoulder and just crushing him in his hand, uh, trying to lift him up. Uh, ben, it is a DC 18 real, deck real save. Real quick, does he get like an extra action? Yeah, he, he has villain has actions. advantage yeah. on deck saves thanks to uh, haste. Oh shit! Well, oh no, I just meant because he's not in the order right now. Correct. Right? So yeah. He so so he the, got it, the, got it, got it, got it. the same as the snow sharks have a thing Double that they can him. use at the end of any. It's called a villain action. Um, these are called action oriented monsters. If you want to Google those, they're they're for me a lot more fun. Um, Justin, you might enjoy them too. Yeah. Anyway, uh, is going think, to. What's I that? didn't think to mention it because he has danger sense, but. Um, yeah, he gets advantage on deck saves with him. Yeah, I mean, he might as well be worth using it either way, G. So it's a DC 18 deck save, roll it with advantage. Yeah, and then even if I fail, like, I got the evasion where I can automatically succeed, so fuck this guy. Is that's an AoE effect, though, isn't it? I don't think it's... Is it any deck save? It just says when you fail a dexterity saving throw while wearing it, you can use your reaction to expend one of its charges to succeed nice. on that saving throw instead. Okay, well, go ahead and roll it. I'll just try to roll first. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, saving throw, right? Yep. If you just okay. have yourself highlighted and then click the that button, it'll it'll do it for you. It was just roll it with advantage, yeah. Uh, seventeen. So that would fail. So you're gonna use your ring. Click yeah. click the ring. I want to make sure that it would. I, I I I believe you. I just want to see it. I guess, anyways. Yeah. I thought that was supposed to be for, you know, evasion, like the rogue ability evasion, which is uh, um, uh, like AOE effects and stuff. Fail a dex heavy throw wearing it. Yeah, it doesn't specify. All right. Yeah. All right, so you're going to use that to succeed? Yeah. Okay. It's good, because this was about to be... Remember when Kedis was thrown by those giant mushroom things? Oh. Uh, like all the That's way about what... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that was that was, you know, that was was like 200 feet away. I think Sokka was, was there still, too. So, uh, wasn't wasn't yeah, Kedis still was, there? 
Yeah, that was yeah, he was because because the one hundred years. Yeah, that was during the Solon Century, and Peter uh, sent uh, Toki down to go get him. Remember? Yeah, we threw Toki off the airship. Yeah, like a football. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um. Anyways, anyway. yeah. So he he was about yeah. to throw Norok down the hill. So. <laughs> Uh, succeeded uh, with with the ring uh, can choose to succeed there. Uh, that'll that's it for the legendary action. That brings us to Pietro. Pietro is going to. Uh, I'm thinking he's going to. <laughs> I'm going to have Pietro fly down into the cave and attack the ice elemental. Okay. Uh, can he get that far? Actually, no, he can't way. get that far. Uh, I don't want him to... to uh, I could always cast him again, I suppose. Um, Joe 3.0. <laughs> real quick, uh, when we heard <laughs> them Kamikaze. talking, when they heard him talking, I'd have no idea that this is a quote-unquote possible scout, right? I wouldn't... I wouldn't uh, know Norak that there's not a possibility. Tell you guys that. Yeah, like, exactly. I don't know I if there's... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Norak knows to, that, uh, but he hasn't told you, so... You know the village is yeah. here, but I didn't say that this guy might have been a scout. I did, but yeah. I didn't say that. I'm gonna there. I'm gonna have here Pietro fly up and try to just attack his his face and just peck okay. and uh, uh, and claw at his head. Okay. And so we will do. Then Sako, you're up next. Weak. <laughs> attack. Uh, roll the attack. It's only DC 15 or AC is 15. Oh, it is. Yeah, 24. It. That'll hit. Yep. Oh, big money on this attack right here. Yes, That's six something. more. And I think he has multi-attack, but I could be wrong. He's got a whole bunch of... St- I'm trying to use the new interface. Uh, it does have multi-attack. Yeah, I think it's it just is is two, it two attacks. beak attacks? Yeah. Oh, yep. just two beaks. Uh, well, either uh, beak and claws. It's one beak, one claws. Oh, it doesn't show his claws on here. All right, that's okay. I'll do claws. Open it up manually like I did in the old times. <laughs> the old times of, you know, a week Earlier ago. today. <laughs> nah, <laughs> yeah. that- oh, it will do it. Uh, 16 will still hit, yeah. Six. Yep. Pietro, you're stronger than I remember you. <laughs> yeah, that's not bad. Good, good job, Pietro. Yeah, and he's just going to hover around the guy's head because I'm not sure the guy's going to think Pietro is much of a threat, but <laughs> he'll be there. Uh, you you and, do know that he will think he's food. Yeah, sure, you know, but he's, they're, they're he's got other things. Or... He'll, he can eat after he's tried to murder us. He's not yeah, going to do yeah. it now. He's All probably right, not Pietro's particularly thing. you know peckish just yet. He's probably uh, gonna... uh, I, see what I thought that was funny there. Peckish? Come on. Yeah. Nobody? Justin's the only I one? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, it is your turn, Sako. Alright, two turns ago, the giant was about to uh, use his horn, but he decided to throw his horn down. Where's the horn? Oh, broke. Uh, broke. Well, so so Norok like, cleaved it in half, or broke it, and then he, he smashed it. Like, Norok broke it, so he just crunched the rest up okay. and then threw it at Sarah. It's, it's in bits. So it's dead then. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. All right, then uh, in that case, I will uh, finish off the uh, Ice Elemental uh, with another blast. Okay. Yeah, he threw the shards of it at you, Sarah. I didn't realize he threw it at me. I probably would have flipped him off. (laughs) (laughs) More Eldritch Blast, Sucko? Yeah, I'm trying to find it on this thing. Just for fun, I'm going to move you away, and I'll put you right back. I just want to see them them cool lightning bolts. (laughs) Damn cool. I'm not going to lie. Most of the time when I'm not... Like I don't even really look at the map anymore. I'm just staring at character. You're in your in your character sheet. Yeah, that's all one. I'm looking at. Really. Yeah. yeah well, your second and third Tucker with that one. Wait, wait, uh, am Jesus. I? Actually, uh, no, no, he's right next to you. I just moved him. Oh yeah, no, you could. For the visuals. You could, uh, yeah, you could. Uh, uh, you could reroll that natural one if you want. Okay. All right. So Salco, you get so that twenty four is going to hit, but you're also going to get to reroll one of those natural ones because uh, Pogo is is going to use his reaction. Did you just feel lucky around me? <laughs> After he chastised you for not getting back in the or the dome. Yeah. Uh, so two of them hit. Salco, go and roll the damage for two of them. Oh, did I turn it? I, I must not have. I, think I must not have set it back up afterwards. Damn it! I wanted to see them bolts. Them bolts, them bolts, them blue ass bolts. All right, twenty-one more. Uh, actually, the first one is, is another one, so twenty-two more uh, from your glove. And he only had seventeen left. Uh, as the second uh, uh, bolt impacts the, you know, what might be supposed to be a chest type area, uh, the creature shatters into uh, a, a snowfall of icicles and small bits. 
just raining down around you. It doesn't do any. You don't. You're not injured by it or anything else. But it is clear, dis clearly dissipated. Any bonus actions or movement, Sokov? I'm just gonna move back to the bubble. Okay. All right, you climb back up the steps, back inside. Then, um, I, I probably I could have just put an effect down for the for the dome for you guys. But, uh, anyways, uh, back to the frost giant. Um, it is. Let's see. Uh, actually, you know what? Uh, at the end of Nazim's turn, before you know, so using its its uh, other uh, uh, legendary action, the villain action thing here. Um. You see in front of you, Norak, as, as he uh, uh, attempted to to grab you and you pushed his hand away. Uh, you see him kind of hold his hand up in, in front of his face and he kind of breathes out this frosty uh, uh, air over it and it kind of solidifies into this icy javelin. So Is it a spell? No. Damn it. Okay. <laughs> he doesn't... Well, I mean, not that you... You haven't seen him I catch any kind of spells. I know that, but I was hoping it was... Yeah, it's not a mag well. I mean, it is a magical oh. effect, but it is not a spell. It's not something yeah. you can counter spell if that's what you're asking. Um, yeah, but he he uh, breathes it into a an icicle shape uh, and <laughs> is then going to he's going to spin around to the side as he goes to throw it. Norak, that'll provoke an opportunity attack from you as well as Shan. Ooh, He's rotating, and he's just so big that him standing on his right foot and rotating his left foot away is extracting him from the radius of your of your attack range. Does that make sense? Uh, twenty hits, right? Yep. Coming up. There we go. I like that we're all basically back in a bubble watching like a movie. <laughs> I mean, you guys could have come out. I feel bad that Artemis like Artemis Artem felt trapped. Like she had to stay in there so that the dome would stay up. You know, you know, she so, doesn't have to. It was just a suggestion. <laughs> it was a great option. It is. It totally it is. I just I feel bad that like you know Fox didn't get to be involved the because elementals you know, are gone. You can do whatever the fuck you want. He doesn't have more no more. Yeah, well, I do have an idea. Hopefully, it'll work once it's my turn. So, you know what I say? I say Fox is just to to pay them back for it. You should just dive out of it because you'll be able to do like a cool roll or something to, to make yourself land safely. But as soon as you're out, the thing falls. They're just gonna they just go plummeting to the ground. And then then Avar is going to shoot someone in the asshole. <laughs> he starts Probably, the go. Go. Oh, go flinging, yeah. Probably shoot me in my asshole. <laughs> That's my money uh, maker. I need that thing. That's what you get for not letting him shoot before. <laughs> Uh, 22 will hit you, Gordon. I, I, I added the 7, uh, Becky. Go ahead and roll the damage for the sword. Alright, 15 more. He is... He is bloodied now, so he's still, he's still got a lot of life left, but he is bloodied. Uh, as he spins in place, though, Norak, you you try to kind of cleave away at, at you know the calf, trying to, to get to the Achilles. Uh, you kind of cut enough into the to the the furs uh, to draw blood. Uh, the the uh, attack from from Shan is enough to kind of rip into an ankle a little bit too. Uh, doing your best, you know, as much as you can to try to to prevent this. But he spins in place and. Uh, this this icicle, this javelin that he's created, he immediately flings it in Sarah's direction. Uh, it is a ranged spell attack against the target. What's that? Oh wait, ranged spell attack? Yeah, I mean it's it's not a it's not a spell, but it's a ranged spell attack. Is the roll, which is just against your AC. Uh, for a fifteen. Oh. Nope, it's sixteen. Thanks. Oh, with your with skin. your shadow skin. All right. Uh, the uh, icicle goes sailing past you. You kind of look at it disappear into the night uh, as, as it flies up, uh, you know, past your shoulder, uh, which is good because that, um, if it had impacted anything, the, the icicle then explodes also, which which does force damage and would have knocked you off of the broom and you would have fallen the 50 feet and so on. So okay. good, that it, good that it missed because it had it hit anything or if you well, had been closer to the ground and it hit the ground, it also would have worked there too. I was going to use shield until you said spell attack, and then I was like, I don't know if shield works against that. Damn it! <laughs> I mean, it's just—it's literally a ranged spell attack, which it still would have. Like it's, okay. it, you know, any, any kind of a, you know, uh, projectile essentially, it would still work. And this was one, uh, but that missed, which brings it to his—that was the end of Nazim's turn for his last legendary action for this turn. Although he gets them back now because it is his turn, but uh, now for for his uh, 
which is why I had to have him do it there. Uh, he is going to, uh, grabbing the stone maul up over his head, is going to try to slam it down onto uh, one onto Shok, and then swing again at Norok, so one at each. Oh, I see. The Shadow Hound isn't a big enough threat. <laughs> He's has been another nibbled at by the Hound. One. Jesus Christ, another one. That's that was, that was a Shok. Fifth. Yeah, that was the Shok. I'll get a 20 on me, though. A 13. Nope. Still <laughs> won't hit. Still okay. not enough. Oh, this poor, this poor scout. You guys just decided you had to murder him. Hey, we tried talking. <laughs> oh, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, no, you guys did. No, he just. We tried Pogo's diplomatic avenue. Well, he he we, he actually did. did we, give, <laughs> he get he gave Norok like he an out. He he told totally like he told Norok that you guys could just share the cave and be perfectly fine. But Norok didn't agree to his terms. Are you? So. Is that's what happened? Yeah. Oh God, no, God damn it. <laughs> oh yeah, but he he wanted you guys, so I was like, oh, yeah, to eat us. Oh, to eat us. Right. Yeah, and not let you guys get you know had for dinner. So. <laughs> yeah, that's what Norak said no to. So you guys may not want to be All too right, mad about it. Yeah, <laughs> he deserves to die. It's fine. Uh, great axe from Nor or from uh, Shok here. He's wise in the ways of the world, though. He knows. Twenty-two what he wants to and uh, nineteen. Those will both hit. Uh, Norak, you're up next. Okay. Uh, 21 more. All right. Your turn, G. Okay. No, I, I don't have disadvantage anymore, I'm guessing, since so I can see him now. Yeah. Yeah, you're, he's okay. uh, he's just, like, he's in the dim area of the light, but you can still get to him, yeah. He's, like, half in the bright and half in the dim. Well, you know what? Fuck, I'm going to use reckless anyway. Okay. I'm going to try to whack him. Uh, also, of course, um, try to use great blend for master. But... Okay. Now that you can actually roll properly, make yeah. a straight attack instead of disadvantage. You know you can reuse reckless attack when you're at disadvantage just to make a straight roll, right? Yeah, you could have. Mm -hmm. I wasn't even thinking about the fact that on my first turn that I was, even though I was just told that I was in the dark, that I was going to have disadvantage, I didn't think about it for some reason. So. I moved you over so that you're in front of him. See, this is why I tried to make you watch Critical Role, but you refused. <laughs> oh, I don't refuse. I I just... so oh, uh, Becky, ideas. did you see that the, on Thursday they're announcing Campaign 3, what it'll be, and so on? <gasps> no! Oh, I'm yep. so excited. So, alright, uh, 27 will hit. Yeah. Okay, it, uh, yeah, I'll do Great Weapon on this one, of course. Uh, well, okay, in that case it was 22, but that'll yeah. still hit, so <laughs> go okay. ahead. Alright. Yeah, I already did say that though, so it wouldn't. Yeah, you did. Anyway, you did. So. Yeah. Uh, twenty-two then. Uh, that's that's a good hit. He is in bad shape at this point. Go ahead. And, uh, you have two more attacks. You still doing your your haste attack? Yeah. Uh, how close yeah, to death do you look? Because I'm gonna try. To I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Yeah, 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 I'm gonna yell out if you see him. Guys, like, like, don't kill him. Just knock him unconscious so we can talk to him. We can yeah, take his weapon him. away. Uh, yeah. you, I mean, you keep cleaving away at his, like, his ankles and his, like, basically from, like, waist down, uh, because he's standing, you know, on the same level as you now, uh, and he's bleeding from multiple locations at this point. He's starting, like, he's breathing heavy, he could probably take, I would estimate, based on your, you know, what, what Norok would estimate, he, like, three more hits, he'd probably kill him. All right. So, one to two more, he'll probably still be alive, unless you crit. Okay, well then I'll do under just a regular standard attack on this one, but uh, when I notice that he's getting low, I'm going to try to non-lethal, so that way I don't okay. right. really outright kill him. If, then if you do crit, we'll just say it's non-lethal, that's fine. Okay, <laughs> yeah. I guess I didn't need to click that again. Click the attack again. <laughs> well, that would miss that. anyways. Yeah. Alright, I'll try the last one. Since I frenzied. So. Yep. Because I would have yeah. No, I would have... You'd have two. You'd have your frenzy yeah, have and your haste. The, the haste yep. Too, yeah. yep. Your frenzy from your bonus action and then your haste. Uh, that would hit. Go and roll the damage. Okay. Uh... 
I would say that at this point he's like he he's still fighting. He's not like given up at all, but he is critical enough that one unlucky shot would kill him at this point. Alright, <clears throat> excuse me, so I'm gonna try non lethal. So okay. try not to kill him if I was small. Uh, that'll hit. Yeah, definitely. Uh, lethal. Oh, I meant to move that over to you. Uh, Fox, you're up next. All right, he is still. Yeah, I mean that wasn't that wasn't enough to take him down, but uh, yeah, he's still still fighting. Um, he is in very bad shape though at this point. Could I yeah, let him for a free action and tell him to drop his arms and we'll drop ours? Uh, sure. You shout that to him. Uh, give me a persuasion check with disadvantage. Motherfucker. <laughs> Next time we fight a bunch of halflings, guys, I'll, I'll talk us out of this. <laughs> It'll be good. <laughs> I'll just bust out some Wemmick jokes. <laughs> See how many jokes Yogg no, or uh, Norok knows in Lurg? Lurg. A one and a two. <laughs> Not a good for all. I guess uh, I ain't gonna work this time. Artemy, it is your turn. You did hear Norok shouting at him in in what you you know is is giantish as Lurg. It sounded like he did a hiccup in the middle of the sentence, so it <laughs> didn't quite go across. Um. Okay. So, how is everybody on health? Uh, Nazim took a hit, but he got healed a little bit, and Sarah is only minor injuries. So everybody seems fine. Nobody, nobody's severely injured. Okay. He's rolled really awful on trying to hurt you guys. So. I know. Gotcha. Okay, so in theory, I could cast a spell inside the dome, just not outside of it, right? Yeah, you can cast on somebody else inside the dome, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to cast Flaming Arrows on Avar's um, quiver. Okay. All right. He he is extremely nervous. Like, he feels that this uh, this heat coming from uh, from the quiver, and he sees the arrow that he still has knocked start to light up. What? what do, 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 do I need to put this out? What do I do? What do I do? Oh. Relax. When you fire it, it's going to do extra damage. It won't hurt you, and the spell will last until you use 12 uh, arrows. Yeah, and it looks really cool too. So it's like smoking in front of girls. So, so do I go? Do I go out and do I go out and fire it then? And he starts moving towards the edge of the dome, like he's about to climb down. Yeah, sure. Ginger snaps. Whatever. Then <laughs> <laughs> right. he climbs his way. Uh, it's his turn, but he's like you know preparing to climb his way. Yeah. Come back in right away after you fire. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. And he starts climbing in the, the stairs. On his turn, he will, anyways. Any bonus actions, Fox? That was an action. Um, no, because if everybody's fine, I'm not. I was going to cast um, uh, Healing Spirit as a bonus and then, like, send it out after the next mm -hmm. round. But if everybody's fine, I'll just wait to heal. Yeah, nobody, yeah, looks, nobody, nobody looks significantly injured, really, at all. Oh, they're, they're not miss, boy. <laughs> hey, he's probably fast, you too. <laughs> All right, uh, then that brings us back to Shan. Yeah, I got a question. Mm -hmm. Can I make Shan disappear as a free action? Hmm. Click the spell yeah. for it real quick. It it doesn't specify. I mean, I'll click it, but yeah. It doesn't say anything about how... Because normally it's basically she has to kill it or she it has was, to die. It was... Yeah. That's essentially it. Yeah. It doesn't say that I can just her. Yep. <clears throat> so then she's just gonna run up and attack. Him, hopefully. Yeah. I don't Die. think she and she can't do non-lethal or anything. It's either nope. she has to kill it or she dies. Yep. So well, here we go. You okay. guys are gonna. You're, you guys are about to start a, a diplomatic crisis <laughs> with <laughs> with yourselves and the giant tribe up here. It wasn't us. It was the shadow dog. Here we go. Oh. Oh. Okay. Well, <laughs> let's see how you roll. Mhm. Mm oh. Big money. Oh damn. <laughs> well, she <laughs> she, she never rolls. Pogo's still gonna yeah, run out there to bring this out. thing back to life. Okay. All right. Well, I'm gonna go. I'm still gonna try to go <laughs> heal this creature. Okay. Well, up next, I've got a one of those oh. nasty. It's <laughs> if it cold dies. Things. Well. Uh, you, uh, Norok, as you're you're trying to shout at this thing, trying to get it to you know to, to, to lay down his arms and 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 uh, you know talk, 
Uh, Shan <laughs> leaps up through the snow, <laughs> gliding through the air, this kind of beautiful scene of this shadowy dog flying with the snow falling over uh, as she uh, leaps through the air, latches into the like the hamstring and you know, the back of his the back of his thigh uh, and just tears through it, spraying this this kind of bluish silvery blood uh, into the snow. Uh, he collapses forward under the onto one knee as this blood is pouring out of this, this gargantuan wound in his leg and collapses in <laughs> downwards into the snow, like falling, you know, falling his head down the, the cliff and kind of slides down into the snow good 10 15 feet uh, just from his weight uh, he is clearly very inanimate uh, as the life is fading from him right Shan disappears oh, instantly yep <laughs> well if I see this happening I am gonna run out yelling to Norok to take his weapons away all right yeah I will say that that in this moment I'm going you know, to, kind of the the, yeah. the kind of a half step between initiative and not an initiative uh, as you as you guys try to kind of all acting at the same time trying to stop this. Oh, I have some of those nasty ass isco. Oh no, no, don't worry about don't worry about that. I'm 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 going to be <laughs> running around. Him with food poisoning instead. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. You just, I'm going to I'm going to run out um, and I'm going to uh, put my hand on its massive foot and I'm going to not going to bring him conscious i'm going to cast spare the dying okay on him right. so he's still unconscious but he's stable at zero hit points all right so all he's, right. he's just basically uh, he's asleep right now until we help him more but i don't think we want to just kill it it's sentient it's a creature here and you know maybe now it'll understand that maybe it will share a bit without eating us <laughs> or right. whatever it wanted wanna... to do take his weapons and tie him up, I'll shove one of these Isco healing potions down his throat. I'm going to go ahead and tell you that his yeah, stone wall is like, it's taller than Norok. Even Norok moving it uh, is going to be very difficult. I'll drag the motherfucker. Um, yeah, I mean, it's going to be literally, you're going to be like dragging the handle yeah. and it's going to be like <laughs> like trying to drag a car down the street Oops. kind of thing. Uh, I'm strong enough to tie him up with because I don't think rope's going to cut it. And I'm going to, uh, the, the dome's still up, right? Yeah, Artemis still in there. Yeah. All right. I'm going to, I'd say keep the dome up for right now. And I'm yeah, going now. To Poor up. Fox has been literally trapped this up. whole goddamn session. You know, I have a question. Uh, oh, well, it doesn't matter because she only has to do her weird sleep thing for four hours. So never mind. Oh, I was yeah. Say, anything, like, actually, she, she would be pretty much wrapping up her long rest by now yeah. already. So, and she hasn't done much, so she might actually get a long rest. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to be r right here, and I have cast Spare the Dying. Okay. Um, um, the the oh, yeah. wound slows its bleeding, the, the kind of ever-growing pool of this light blue liquid into the snow, uh, and he, he begins to breathe again, but is not conscious. Okay, guys, what are we, what are we doing? We just, just take his weapons here. away. Take his weapons away. Yeah, Nora's trying understand. to drag his hammer away somewhere. <laughs> I'm yeah. very slowly doing that. <laughs> and uh, trying to look slightly more intimidating, I'm going to uh, get on get on Pietro. So so the, now you are, the air. now you're 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 a mobile like pizza pocket or something yeah. with with the like you're writing on food and also our food. Yeah, yeah. it's like a little kid riding a chicken. <laughs> it's a turducken. It's a halfling. So, on a, so, <laughs> yeah. so we can we can let we we don't want to have him come back too strong. We just want him to come back, and I want you to tell him that we're still willing to work with him and we didn't want this to happen but that he should respect us and our strength I feel like their culture respects strength That's I should true. tell him that when he wakes up we should wait until after a minute has passed so Norik is done with his round of I can't do shit yeah that's fine I mean I think we can wait one minute we'll wait are you going to drop minutes. the haste effect on Norok then yeah Okay. All right. <laughs> riding chickens <laughs> Um, <laughs> that's okay. the chocobo right there. I don't have anything that'll tie this guy up, so are we just leaving him untied? No, leave him untied. Just let's make this. Yeah, we can I understand. Him. We'll get it if we need to. I understand How? he's aggressive, but he's also intelligent, right? These are in, more. These are these are sentient, intelligent people, and right. maybe now he'll understand who he's messing with. How I mean, he's got. If he's. We, How far away was he able to drag the hammer? <laughs> Out give of the me. Light? I'm assuming. Yeah, give me a strength check with. He's not gonna be happy. His food just beat his ass. <laughs> you know what? You know what? Fuck that. I'm going to cast. Uh, his chicken animate... nuggets just beat him up. Nope. I'm gonna cast animate objects uh, on the hammer. 
and okay. I'm going to take control of the hammer. It would be considered a large object, I'm guessing. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, so, he is huge, uh, so the it object has, would be large, yeah. It has 50 hit points, and it's going to be hovering next to me. Uh, in fact, I'm going to pretend like I'm holding it in my hand <laughs> on top of <laughs> my grip. This and thing I'm is going like to four be kind times of like, as tall as yeah. you. <laughs> and it's animated in my hand, and I'm just going to be like kind of holding this. And I it's still literally about 12 feet tall, and yep. you're like three feet tall. So it, it, this, this is a fucking Japanese anime of We gotta do it fast, weapons. folks. I can, only, <laughs> I can only do it for a minute. So uh, as soon as he wakes up, I'm going to just, t I'm going to have it like fly behind me as if I'm, th I want him to see me throwing this fucking giant hammer behind okay. me. All right. So uh, um, it is, it's, it's when, time anyways. What's that? Yeah. When, Go ahead. So you're throwing it behind you when he wakes so, up? I'm, I'm, I can, I'm going to have it basically, it's just going to fling backwards, you know, about 40 feet per, uh, for six seconds, 50, whatever it is, whatever it's movement speed. Just, you're just going to make it move, you know, with animate as if you had thrown it, as if you're uh, strong yeah. enough to be able to fling it. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> so I'm going to, if Sarah knows this is the plan, are you going to bring it back or are you leaving it out there? I was just going to leave it at that. Why is it, Great. This is then I'm going to cast darkness on it when it's out there, so no one can fucking see it once it's out there. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Good picture. Can't find it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Then we'll go. We'll call it there. Then, um, and we'll pick up there. Right. I, I'll, I'll try to, you know. You know, report all those details, but remember what it is specifically you're doing next week, just in case. We can always uh, recap. It is, yeah, exactly. We can we can just recap at the beginning of next week. So, uh, let's see what does next 